This is Dan Lexi from Dan Schultz Outdoors, reminding you to keep the adventures alive. Hey y'all, I'm Johnny. And I'm Colleen. And, and we're, we're the Keel Quest. Quest. And, and we, we want, want you to keep, keep the adventures alive. alive. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, this is Darren from Ride Paddle Repeat, encouraging you to keep the adventures alive. This is David from Beachley Ironworks saying keep the adventures alive. Hi, I'm Dan Mayock. Keep the adventures alive. Hi, I'm Kevin Collin, the Happy Camper. Remember, keep the adventures alive. Awesome! Woo, buddy! Shug here! Keep the adventures alive. I am. Ethan here, the Avid Outdoorsy Guy, reminding you to keep the adventures alive. We're John and Aaron. Keep the adventures alive. Hey everyone, it's Kylan from Lure of the North, and I encourage you to keep the adventures alive. This is Sky North telling you, keep the adventures alive. And now on with the show. Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. How are we all doing tonight? My name is Dennis, and you are watching another episode of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show, a show that brings you a lot closer to the great outdoors. Purpose of this show, bring you all kinds of great outdoor topics, and of course, the YouTube personalities that you enjoy and watch. And tonight is no exception. Now, we got a great show lined up for you tonight with a couple of great guests from Alexis Outdoors and Timbermates, the YouTube channels. So uh, stick around and uh, let's have a fun evening. Uh, if you're new to the show, just want to let you know, we are here live every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, so be sure to mark that on your calendars and join us for a fun evening. It's always relaxed and chill and just a good time, so uh, make sure you put that on your calendars. We'd love to have you in here and, you know, make use of that chat over there. Get in there, get to meet some great people, uh, check out some great channels, and most of all, just have a great Tuesday evening. You know what? The weather's getting nice out there. I know everybody wants to get out there and enjoy it. But Tuesday nights, spend them here, at least for the next couple of weeks. Uh, before we get going on tonight's topic there, I got some uh, channel news and updates, things I just want to fill you in on while the chat over there does populate. And we get all our uh, our friendlies in here that uh, so that they can uh, take, take part of the show. Uh, last week, we had a great show. Uh, we had a sponsor in Algonquin Outfitters who's been celebrating 60 years in business. And uh, how fitting it was that we actually talked about the Minas Link canoe, uh, canoe route, a uh, very tough, rugged canoe uh, route within uh, Algonquin Park and just on the outskirts of it. And we had Gord Baker, Chris and Julia Prouse, and Kevin Callen on, and we learned all kinds of uh, trips, uh, tips, tricks, techniques, and of course, heard a lot of great stories because uh, Gord is the founder or one of the co-founders of the Minas Link, so he had a lot of the history on it. 
Chris and Julia Prouse are the speed record holders unassisted uh, in doing the entire Minas Link. And then, of course, Kevin Callan, who's written a book on it called Once Around Algonquin Park. Uh, so we had a lot of great uh, knowledge on the show. And if you missed it, go back and check our Season 2 playlist in uh, Canoe Hound Adventures. And by all means, watch it. It's a great episode. Uh, you won't be sorry that, uh, that you watch it. This is for sure. Just want to congratulate last week's swag winner from the show as well, uh, Sue Leon, who won a swag package worth around four hundred dollars. Uh, as I mentioned, Algonquin Outfitters stepped up to the plate and put together a pretty sweet prize package for us, and we do have some really good things to give away tonight. So stick around until at least the eight o'clock hour so that uh, you can be uh, privy to the uh, the swag giveaway. If you have to leave early, you can always come back and watch it. It's always about one hour or hour and twenty minutes into the show where you can actually see that, so you can check it out. Uh, just a reminder. Two more episodes after this one, the Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show. Then I'm going to be taking the summer off. Uh, members, stick around because we will probably have a couple of member-only uh, live streams uh, through the off-season. And uh, if you want to partake in that, all you got to do is become a channel member. Uh, them shows are a little less organized, but they're a lot of fun as well. So uh, by all means, check it out um, and stick around if you are a channel member. Uh, let's see here into next season, which will start again around September. I have a couple of doozies that are gonna be uh, planned. So if you wanna keep up to date with what's gonna be happening in season three, make sure you go to Facebook and follow us at uh, Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show on Facebook, and you will get all the updates and news throughout the, uh, the summertime so that you'll know exactly what's coming. But mark my words, I have a couple of really big names that are gonna be on the show early on into the season. So. By all means, check that out. I uh, just want to go through uh, some of my membership shout outs. I'd like to shout out my solo, trip, solo tripper channel members uh, Stein North, Kevin with an A, Jeremy Walla, Smoking Our Barbecue, Pam Bookham, and Michaela Ferguson. And to all my other channel members, thank you very much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, it helps the channel go a long way and helps offset all these costs of, uh, you know, streaming software and equipment to bring this, uh, this show to you and, uh, you know, the occasional beer here and there. So that's, uh, that's all good too. And if you're looking to get more out of Canoe Hound Adventures, by all means, check out that, uh, that join button on YouTube right down around there somewhere, check it out and, uh, see all the benefits that come with becoming a channel member, uh, stickers, custom emojis, uh, all kinds of neat little things that, uh, you can benefit from one of three packages, right? I uh, also just want to say really quick thanks to my show sponsors before we get started to Algonquin Outfitters, uh, Kid Products, makers of the Kid Twig Stove and Reflector Oven, our good friends over at the Backcountry Coffee Company. Thank you guys for the coffee that always keeps me wide awake for these shows. Mm. And... Alpine Rose this time around, by the way, guys, just in case you were wondering. Uh, our good friends over at Sign Great Signs and Graphics, Short Hills Beer Company, and Ursac USA. Thanks very much for your support. Everybody, these are great companies. If you want to find them or you want to, you know, help support them, their links are in the description below, so be sure to check that out. Now, this is something that I just, uh, this is going to be the first week for this year, and it's something that I'm going to incorporate into the season next year. Uh, it's going to be something that I call a toast to the backcountry. Uh, just my excuse or another reason for us to drink while we're enjoying this show. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is this mini segment that's going to be called Toast of the Backcountry, uh, a fun opportunity for us to raise a glass, can, bottle, or a cup of your favorite beverage, whether it's hot or cold. And uh, we're going to toast something good about the backcountry. Uh, we all have great, enjoyable things that uh, obviously we enjoy the backcountry because we are the outdoor kind, right? And uh, it's a, it's a great way to, uh, to kick off the show and uh, have a beverage together, right? If anyone is interested and uh, wants to be recognized as one of our um, uh, weekly supporters of this segment of the show, you can by all means go and check out uh, A Toast of the Backcountry or buymeacoffee.com at canoehound. Uh, buymeacoffee.com forward slash canoehound. And anybody that does uh, contribute to this here, you will be recognized as you can see here on the screen. Uh, it's my way of saying thank you. Uh, thank you to all these people who have already uh, contributed to the uh, Toast of the Backcountry. So thanks very much for your, uh, your patronage and uh, your generosity. And with that being said, this is going to be the first inaugural Toast of the Backcountry. 
So I hope everybody has something cold or hot, can, bottle, whatever it might be. Um, if you don't, you can get in on this a little later, but this is going to be the first official toast. I'm going to crack this bad boy. There we go. And this, the first official toast of the uh, this segment. Tonight's toast is, here is to all the responsible campers before you who are courteous enough to leave you some dry firewood and a clean campsite. Here's to you. Cheers. Uh, I see a couple of our people down in the basement here uh, toasting. Thanks, guys. <laughs> if anybody has anything that they would like to like us to toast in the future, drop me an email at canoehound at gmail.com. I'd love to get a nice stack or list of, of great toasts for the backcountry. It could be a one-liner. It could be a five-liner. Let's not make it a novel. But uh, please send them in. I'd love to get your uh, your toasts up here on screen or and, you know, in, into this whole segment. So please do. Please do. Earlier, I also mentioned I am the outdoor kind. I got my new T-shirt today from uh, John Van Berger from uh, the Outdoor Kind uh, LLC. He's a, uh, a non-for-profit charitable organization down in the states, and they do some great safety things for first responders. Thanks, John, very much. And John has just started a new podcast too. I think he was on a couple weeks ago, and he mentioned something about it called um, the I think it's the Outdoor Kind Adventure Show. And you can look for that on your favorite podcast channel. Check it out. He's got a really good show. He's about two or three episodes in now. And I think he's uh, running them live now on Wednesday evenings. So check him out by all means. Anyways, babbling on here. Babbling on. I like that cheer section. And that's good beer too. Uh, let's see here. If anybody has any hot topics that they'd like to see on the show or, or some guests, also drop me an email at canoehoundergmail.com. We will try to make that happen. Obviously, it's not going to happen this season, but we are building for season three. So let's uh, let's go at it that way. Uh, let's see. Last week during the show, I introduced uh, or during my intro, intro, I had mentioned uh, a new cookbook that was coming out called Backcountry Eats. Um, yeah, the Backcountry Eats cookbook. And here to tell us a little bit more about that is my good friend uh, Kevin from Kevin Outdoors. How are you doing, Kevin? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm going to good, uh, good. Hey, man, congratulations. I seen your book in print. Well, because you held it up for me and it uh, looks really good. I can. I, yeah, I'm uh, happy to finally get my hands on a few copies. So we're going to awesome. give these away um, this show and the next two shows. There you go, everybody. If you stick around for the swag giveaway, you can win yourself one of them books. What, what can you tell us about the book? Um, it, It's... um. It's got a lot of recipes, but more than that, the first hundred pages are devoted to telling people, uh, teaching people uh, how to dehydrate food, what to look for in a dehydrator, how to pack. Um, and I don't just cover my way, I cover the different options that are available to you. So the concept of this book was really um, trying to help folks get into the back country. If you're a front country tripper um, and you, you know, your uh, your food bag's a little heavy or your, your food barrel's a little heavy, this book will help you lighten your load and, and get deeper into the backcountry. And if you're an experienced tripper, um, you're going to find some recipes here that are uh, unique and different uh, than what you're probably used to. Mm -hmm. And just looking at these pictures here, there, uh, well, there's some, uh, some good dishes on there. And you, you cover everything from recipes to dehydrating single items. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, I've got I've got a big section on dehydrating single items, but really I, I tend to uh, dehydrate most of my food together um, just for efficiency. And 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 I, I cover the, the different options uh, in the book. Awesome. And I also cover some things, uh, you know, we've got some unusual things like um, cottage cheese or, or um, clarified butter and all those kind of things that help you get into the backcountry. That's great. How long did it take you to put this book together? I'm sure that wasn't easy. Uh, only 25 years. Well, only 25 <laughs> years. Um, I'm, I'm good for. I'm good for a couple more. Um, it, it started when I was uh, out on a trip with a buddy of mine, uh, and uh, like 25 years ago. And he said, you know, we had a, a terrible trip. It was raining. Um, we had uh, terrible, terrible rains. We did the Death March portage in Coitico, and uh, and on the last night the weather broke, and I. I fed him a nice meal and he said you gotta you gotta do something about this so um so i did i started writing um but in the last two and a half years i got pretty serious at it and really worked it over so 
Um, and now I've got a product. Now you got a product, and you must have been so proud when you first got your first uh, hard copy, huh? Yeah, yeah, very, very happy to see that finally. Um, yeah, it's been a long time in the uh, incubation incubation phase, that's for sure. Wow, that's good. Well, congratulations on that. So, where where can people actually pick up a copy of the book? Um, you can order online. I'm working hard to get it into backcountry stores. So, uh, um, if you, if you feel like mentioning that when you're in a store, that's great. But uh, you can find the book at uh, my website, backcountryeats.com. There's a hyphen between backcountry and eats. And um, you'll find it there. You'll find links to where you can buy it uh, direct from the publisher, um, which is great. Um, and also uh, amazon.com and amazon.ca. And if you're somewhere else, I know it's available. Um, I've had people buying it already in Australia and uh, the UK and New Zealand. So I know it's available somewhere there. Okay. And, and because you do have the uh, the website backcountryeats.com, I'm sure they can gather more information there as well. Uh, I, Kevin, I invite you uh, yeah. to the live stream. If you want to drop the link to that a few times in the chat, please do feel free. And uh, let's see if uh, we sure, can garner a little more it. attention. And thank you very much, too, by the yeah. way, for uh, for donating a couple of them for our swag giveaways for the remaining shows of the season. That's a, that's an awesome uh, gesture, and I look forward to getting my copy. Yeah, your copy's in the mail. Um, so so uh, you're going to click the, the addresses, and I'll send them direct. I'm away next week. I'm going to be on a trip, so you won't see me on the show, but um, much appreciated. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get them out as soon as, uh, as soon as I get back. That is awesome. Thank you, Kevin. I really appreciate that. Best of luck with the book and have a great time on your trip next week. Eh? It's nice to have a bit of freedom to do that now, right? Yeah, finally, finally. And and where I was going it was uh, blocked off by forest fires. So that, that just lifted as well. So I've had everything line up in front of me and, and uh, finally things are clearing. Now, just to let, let, let the masses know, you're you're up, we'll, we'll just say Thunder Bay area. So you're, you're up pretty north there. Yeah. So what, what are, yeah, what are things like up there right now, condition-wise? Uh, condition-wise, things are, are great. Um, we had some really hot, dry weather, and it uh, we had a, a bit of a fire flop, um, but um, that's uh, passed, and uh, looks like great tripping weather the next little while. Super. Good stuff. Hopefully the mosquitoes don't carry you away, and uh, you'll have a good time up there. <laughs> right on. Thanks All so right, Dennis. Kevin. Thanks very much. Here's to you. The toast is directed to you. I know you leave firewood for people, so that's a good thing. I I love to find firewood um, at a campsite, and uh, that's great. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Thanks, Kevin. You have a great night. We'll talk to you a little later. All right. So, yeah, guys and gals, check out this uh, cookbook. It looks like it's going to be a real good one. Uh, it's going to cover a lot of gamuts, and you know what? Who couldn't have who who doesn't have room for an extra book to slide into their their library, you know, for this outdoorsy type of stuff? Anyways, without further ado, uh, one last thing before we get on with tonight's guests. Thanks for for sticking around, everybody. So far, I know there's a lot leading up to our our guests tonight, but uh, just the way it rolls. Um, if you have any questions for myself or tonight's guests, please do put them in the chat over there. Put the word question before your question. Makes it easier for me to identify. If I don't get to it, I apologize. I always say I'm a one-man show of clicking all the buttons and uh, asking the questions and trying to monitor this, that, and the other thing. So it gets a little confusing sometimes, but uh, you know what? Please do repost your question. Or better yet, I invite you to join us after the swag giveaway tonight. I will post the link, and I welcome you to come up and ask a question face, well, <laughs> kind of face-to-face -face here on uh, on the show to uh, ask our, our guests any questions that you might have and uh, get to meet them kind of. Kind of personally, anyways. Anyways, without further ado, tonight's guests are a favorite of mine on YouTube. Uh, it all began with the YouTube channel, Alexis Outdoors, and now it's branched off to another interesting watch on YouTube called Timbermates. Please welcome to the live stream tonight, Karina and Brandon. How are you doing, guys? Hey, guys. Hey. Doing good. How are you, Dennis? Good, good. I seen you guys pounding beers back there. Hopefully, you're not feeling too wobbly yet. It's not something we do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hopefully we can rectify that before the end of the night, right? <laughs> I'm gonna see, let's see here. You try and get us uh, blown up here on screen a bit. There. Okay, get a little closer, guys. If I we have. Got it in there. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That don't work there. Perfect. So we'll start with Karina. Karina, tell us about Karina. And tell us a little bit more about Alexis Outdoors. 
Uh, so Alexis Outdoors, as many of you probably know, is the YouTube channel I've been running for oh probably five years now, four or five years. Started really slow, of course. It wasn't uh, wasn't I wasn't posting a lot the first couple of years, but um, but yeah, really enjoying it. Um, I'm still doing lots of Crownland trips lately, and through COVID, I did a lot of uh, day trips on Crownland, just exploring places that I knew I wanted to go back and uh, do some overnighters and do some other cool stuff. And uh, Brandon and I have been planning some canoe trips and uh, and we're looking forward to doing more winter trips, just like all, all of the trips. And we wanna, um, we wanna improve in our like distance and stuff. Yeah. Canoe trips. Um, oh, you want to yeah. get into the longer like expedition type of uh, trips and stuff like that, or yeah, yeah, not too not too too long in duration because we we got to work. Well, he he has to work uh, while we both we get on the work. business. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, we want to do like more kilometers in a day type of deal. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so with, with that being said, so you started your channel, what, around 2018, I think? I, I was watching your very first video today. <laughs> I, I always like to go back and sort of... Is that of my lunch in the woods stuff. one? <laughs> Pardon me? Is that my lunch in the woods? Yeah, something like that, yeah. yeah. Like that. You started with that classic shot, eh? Walking past the camera. <laughs> Put the camera down. Oh, it's so it. cringy to look back on those videos. I'm just like, oh my goodness. Everyone's well, got to it somewhere though. <laughs> I think every YouTuber can say that. Eh? They go back and watch your first video. And look how, ho well, mine are still like that. But yeah, you can go back and look at your first videos, right? And see how hokey you were back then. And it, it's pretty neat to watch the transgression of how you improve though over time, right? The angle yeah. shots and the quality of your camera work and your edits and stuff like that. So, and your channel's come a long way. Sure has, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. really excited about it. Yeah. So, what? With, with that being said, what what are some of your your more exciting accomplishments that you've hit uh, with your channel and, and YouTube? Um. So I'm very close to hitting 150 thousand. But when I when I hit 100 K, I was like over the moon. Uh, Brandon and I were able to celebrate that together. Yeah, that was cool. And um, yeah, it's something I never never ever really thought I would hit. But I think the most uh, the most rewarding thing and the thing that is just like kind of a constant milestone for me is how many like positive comments I get of people showing, uh, you know, getting their wives out there, their girlfriends, their mm -hmm. mothers, their what have you, um, their kids. Uh, I get a lot of people that say like your content is like it, it's good for families and all that stuff. Right. So even people that were in the hospital and couldn't get out themselves. Yeah. People yeah. are stuck at home. For whatever reason, yeah, yeah, those are. Like that. So I've heard stories of that many times. They were people actually, uh, that you know, you, you hear these stories where people are um, uh, motivated by other people to get out there, right? And I, I find it happens a lot more often with, uh, and please, please, people, don't take this the wrong way, but with women, right? A lot of times, a lot of women. I, I first off, I love seeing women in the backcountry. Like you know what I mean? It's it, because everybody belongs out there. Right. And people seem to sometimes seem to think this is a male dominated hobby, pastime, love, whatever. And it's not. This is the outdoors is for everybody. Young, old, male, female, you know, it doesn't really matter who you are if as long as you're connected with it, right? Yeah. 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 So, I love seeing the uh, there's even an increase in women in the backcountry these days. And it's it's really awesome that um I especially love that like couples now like men are starting to convince their ladies to go out with them and sometimes it's the other way around sometimes it's you know the wife or the girlfriend they want to go and the guy's like eh, i don't know and they kind of got to drag them out there but it's nice and eventually they both get out there and and get to enjoy that together so yeah, yeah. So it. now, it's funny you say that because a couple weeks ago we had uh tunis and Brittany on the show and we had uh, uh <laughs> keenan and ashley on the show as well it was a show on couples and it could have very well had you or, or, or a bunch of other couples that I know of that are, you know, backcountry campers and, you know, they do this type of thing. But last week I wanted to focus on a couple of, or I wanted to focus on up and comers in the, in the YouTube community because both of them have channels that are really starting to happen. Right. And now with that being said, you actually have a new channel with Brandon called mm -hmm. Timbermates. Right. Yeah, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on that channel. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really digging it. I, when I was younger, I should have got into the profession of, uh, of being a, like you know an arborist or something because I love trees and 
you know, working with trees and wood and all that stuff. But uh, Brandon, so this, did she convince you to do this? The YouTube? I don't know who convinced who, to be honest. Um, it's very, like, one day we both looked at each other and we're like, we should start a channel. Yeah, um, I, don't, I guess we were talking about it because, and I think the reason we started talking about it is because when she started working with me, she noticed that um, we always draw a crowd anytime something like that is happening. You, you know, you get people and equipment and someone's really high in the air and that kind of thing's going on. Just people start setting up their chairs and watching, right? Yeah. And so we're like, you know, people might just enjoy the day to day of, of this. And we're like, you know what? She's got all the editing gear uh, or the, the editing experience, and all the equipment that goes with that, all the camera gear and knows what she's doing. And we thought, you know, what? let's just, just do it for fun and see what happens. It's something we could kind of uh, a project we could work on together. That's kind of how it started. Yeah. How, how true is that? Eh? You, you, you see you see uh, you see these tree trimming companies out in your neighborhood or something. First thing you do is you're at the window and then you get a little more curious. Like you say, yeah. you're there with a lawn chair and a beer sitting on your front lawn watching these yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. And it's a very methodical business too, isn't it? Like you got to do it right. Oh, yeah. It's um, it's one of those things where every decision you make um, can you're, – you're dealing with your, – your, like your life can be in your hands or someone else's or property can be damaged. Um, so – for me, I kind of like to take it as um, if you think about it, if you made a mistake 1% of the time and it was your life, you know, how long would you last kind of thing? Mm -hmm. So I kind of think about it. You don't have to worry about like doing a thousand cuts or a thousand trees and worrying about one thing happening. Um, I just focus on the one cut or the one tree I'm on at the time. And if you do it like that and you work safely, and if anytime I'm not sure, if something seems off, I'm not feeling comfortable with this, stop, take a break, have another look at it, make sure, um, you know, there's there's no reason to rush you, you know you, we want to go home to our families and it's uh so uh, it's it's not it's not as bad as you think but there are dangers and you got to be careful yeah so how long you've been doing this as a as a professional uh, not terribly long um i'd say four or five years like professionally uh till i I, I started in construction and uh kind of just got into it a little bit here and there and then slowly progressed and realized, you know what, I really, really enjoy this. I like the challenge of it. Um, I enjoy working outside uh, and just transitioned into it. And then finally, a couple of years ago, just decided, you know what, this is what I want to do. And it's a big investment in the equipment. If you watch Timbermates, you'd have a good, uh, mm -hmm. good idea of some of the stuff that's involved to, to yeah. do that. Slowly started buying equipment and got more and more and more into it. So yeah, I, I, um, I love it. I think it's just, it's, it's fantastic compared to, like what I used to do. Yeah, I think it was the 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 episode where you guys were grinding out a stump, and then you mm -hmm. went through the whole the whole technique of changing out the teeth on there, and when you know you got to change the teeth out. How often you got to change those things? They go, they're carbide, so they they can't dull too fast. No, they do last. It's actually amazing how long they last. Um, if I can stay out of rocks, uh, you get almost twenty hours out of them, and that's like twenty hours of beating the hell out of them in dirt and, and hard stumps and stuff. So it's actually pretty impressive how long they do last. Um, but I'm actually looking into an option to sharpen them now. It's a special, there's a special diamond disc or something like that. So I'm looking at doing that possibly. Um, but that's yeah, amazing how long they last when, you, when you're, you could do you could do a lot of stumps in twenty hours. Yeah, so that, you invest in a machine that's going to basically pay for itself over time, right? Yeah, the first two years I had it, I probably barely covered the payment on it, uh, not to mention my time, the fuel to get there and everything else. And then since someone else uh, came along, she's helped me to kind of get some ads out there and a little bit more of the online um, aspect of advertising and stuff. So that's helped and I've been doing a lot more. So now it's it's actually, I actually look forward to it um, and it's profitable now, which is kind of <laughs> nice <laughs> to not have expensive of equipment just sitting there doing nothing. So now you're, you're turning this lovely lady into a lumberjack and she's turning you into a YouTuber. <laughs> yep. Yes. <laughs> Guilty. So Karina, I know, I know you have a construction background, right? Yeah. So like, this is kind of right within your wheelhouse. You're not afraid to get dirty, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I also come from like more of a farming background as well. <laughs> so yeah. I'm no stranger to uh, hard work and just kind of labor jobs. So I, I really, really enjoy it. 
And uh, I'm always amazed. It's so funny because so many people are like, oh, you have the hard job. You're on the ground. And I'm like, it's easy to just run around and do labor. Like th there's no thought to it. You just you do what you got to do and that's it. He's up there. He's got to like make sure every branch swings the right way. Every branch is cut properly. He's not like swinging the saw down and there's this to think of and that to think of and buildings and people. And <laughs> it's just crazy. Yeah. So. We won't talk about near misses, but you ever had any near misses? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing major, but so <laughs> when you're up in the air and um, you, at like 70 feet in the air and you get a slight breeze on the ground, it's a, it's a lot windier up there, right? And sometimes what happens is the wind, I'm trying to throw, trying to throw branches like in a certain spot and uh, the wind's pushing a certain way. So sometimes I'm fighting it and it just like, it comes in and it just goes all the way back. They'll move 40 feet easily. Wow. And, not, and so sometimes what happens is I like throw it and all of a sudden the wind shifts and it just, it'll just shoot the other way. Uh, when you're that high, it doesn't take much. <laughs> so we've had a few, nothing with nothing big, anything big. I'm always like really careful. Uh, but we have had a couple little ones that have gotten pretty close, which like little <laughs> tiny little stuff. And we had one incident where we had um, is a red pine, and this is the they're all it was a piece two feet long, probably uh, maybe what four inches, yeah, about four inch diameter, two foot piece. So you know, not very, not very big. I dropped it straight down and it was slightly curved, hit the ground, and just went oh, up like this. Boring. And, somehow landed while well, we wear helmets and face <laughs> protection ear protection and it's a good thing we do and it landed kind of right on her head and went right into the chipper yeah just no like kidding. Oh, right on my head yep it like hit the ground it bounced so high like two well, people kind of over rolled, it. Right? Over. yeah it just yeah. hit and, and and just went right up just spinning it's almost like they like uh i don't know how to explain it they like, it's like a slingshot to itself once it yeah. hits a bit it kind of flexes a little bit and then like springs out of it anyways it went flying hit me right in the head i wasn't even i was i was far enough away like i was at a very safe distance uh feeding the chipper and it just hit me right on the head and landed inside the chipper <laughs> like two people yeah. in the neighborhood came over and they're like that could have ended up really bad but like, yeah the thing it did holy man of course yeah, i had no idea going on and then yeah, all of a sudden I'm like, I'm like on the ground like what's Woo! going on down there and then the neighbor comes over and be like hey are you okay and uh he's like you're home like probably just saved your life yeah <laughs> well that's why you wear the safe yeah. stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, yeah it's pretty cool because I, I seen you the one there you, you got karina some like i love it new gloves or something and hey, you guys you guys got all those husqvarna stuff going right yeah Get the husqvarna yeah husqvarna was good yep. enough to send us a bunch of, like this hat sweaters yeah. Uh, let's see how we do that. Right. There we go. Sure, yeah. Okay. Uh, sent us a whole bunch of stuff. Um, great. Yeah. Hikes even set us up with some boots uh, that uh, chainsaw proof. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it's been good. People we'll get to us. Sweet. So we're we're gonna keep bouncing back and forth here between your your channels because there's wow. so much interesting great. about both, right? So yeah. Karina, we'll we'll get back into this. <laughs> Some of, your, yeah. uh, some of your your adventures now. You, you've been on some uh, pretty cool uh, day trips and stuff like that. But what what's your most accomplished trip? What uh, what would you say is right up there on your scale? Like in total, or as far as day uh, trip? Like just thought. Uh, well, in total, yeah. Like you know, uh, have you done like the week long trip that uh, you would say you know that that was that was the piece de resistance of my my tripping career so far? I have to say more winter camping. Uh, yeah. To be honest with you, I absolutely like have. So I used to be really um, a very cold person. I, I I didn't love winter because I couldn't go out and be comfortable. And I just I never knew how to do it. So finally, uh, probably two years ago when we did like I started winter camping and started learning about layering properly and setting yourself up properly and getting enough calories to like keep you warm and and uh, all that stuff. Um, and, and I finally started to become comfortable in the winter months and then sleeping out there in like minus 15 in an open shelter where it's snowed through <laughs> and stuff like that. Those are the things that I look back and I'm like, hey, I did that and that feels really good. And I just feel like this sense of accomplishment. Um, I would love to do longer canoe trips. Uh, obviously, we have girls, so it's it's really hard to to be able to justify leaving for, you know, a couple weeks at a time or even a week is is a bit of a stretch. Um, so I'm not really able to do stuff like that, but the winter camping trips is probably where I like feel 
like I did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, for, for anybody that doesn't know, now we Karina and I have this common YouTube friend, Ethan, avid outdoorsy guy, yeah. right? Really cool dude. I don't know if he's in the in the live stream tonight. Oh, he might be working who knows. But uh he, he's he's always on you about how how light your packs are and you carry nothing and like how how do you get comfortable with because you are a minimalist when it comes to backcountry camping. Uh, yeah. you, you pack all your stuff and like what I would consider uh, that my day rock and I got water and a couple beers and a sandwich in there and she got all her gear packed in there. Tell, tell us a little bit about how you can manage that. <laughs> Um, I like that you call it minimalist. That's what I call it, but Ethan likes to call it the peasant life. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I, so I have a pretty small like frame. I can't really handle a lot of gear. Uh, and I actually haven't even found the, the like <laughs> people make fun of me because my, my canoe tripping pack is only 55 liters and, uh, and that's it. Like I fit everything in there and, and you'd probably know, like there's, there's no bells and whistles on the outside. you got to fit everything inside. Um, and the only reason I have that pack really is because I can't get a pack to fit my, my back, uh, to be like short enough to be on my back. The, 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 what is it? The waist belt. They always come like way too low, uh, on regular packs. So that was the one that <laughs> it's kind of crappy, but that's the one that I have to use cause it's the only one that fits me cause I'm so small. So, I kind of have to pack light and I have to pack small and as minimalist as I can. Um, but I also really enjoy just the, like the concept of going as light and as far as you can with like almost nothing and kind of making do. And I love gear that has double, double purpose for me. So I don't bring a pillow either. Um, I have before, but I've, I've never found it really comfortable. Haven't found one that I liked anyways. So I'll bring my puffy jacket and sleep on that so things like that um is how i'm able to keep my pack so light and go so minimalist but a lot of people say i give up a lot of luxuries uh but i, I see it as kind of more of a challenge i guess i don't know if you're giving up luxury so much as maybe people are getting soft eh? yeah because <laughs> i remember back in the days like when, when my earlier years of canoeing, right? I started out where, like, you know, you're bringing coolers in, and you're in your aluminum canoe, and <laughs> my and I bring in baseball gloves and frisbees. And this is backcountry camping, right? Oh, and wow. then all of a sudden, one day, we realize, hey, this, <laughs> this is crazy, man. What are we doing this for, right? We got to hike that over the four times, and we got to bring it back out. All our back then, we didn't have water filtration, so we we're bringing in two liter pop bottles that were filled with water instead, right? And <laughs> Like, you know, it, it was just crazy, right? And then and then all of a sudden we realized that like we gotta get rid of this stuff and started going more minimalist, but probably not to your your extent. <laughs> now that I'm getting older, now it's the, the gear's getting a little heavier again, right? Because you gotta bring <laughs> luxuries, right? <laughs> so so Brandon, where where do you stand with that? Are you uh are you gonna be a minimalist later or are you gonna be uh carrying the gear you want? Uh so I'm finding a nice balance between the two. Um, I'm, I'm getting less and less, I would say. Uh, every time I'm able to skim it down, I started kind of not as much as you, but I, I've been into the park with a full boombox radio uh, and stuff quite a few years ago. And I, I, I get, um, I think, what we want to do is be able to increase our distance and speed and that kind of thing and efficiency. So I'm, I'm getting to the point where getting down to her, her level. And the nice thing about it is you don't hate your life on those long portages. <laughs> so yeah. as much as you might be missing a few things, uh, it's a lot quicker to get there. And it feels nice when you're packing up and it doesn't take, you know, half an hour to do it. So yeah, yeah. she's, she's rubbing off on me. Yes. Like, like I say, but now, now as, as a couple, you can go out there and you can actually maybe afford to bring a luxury or two because, you know, you can split it up between you. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah. I like to bring um, a wine in like a, a pop bottle, not like a two liter. That would yep. be nice. But, no, I should know. say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I really like that with, with suppers and stuff. It's something you can bring in that's like not a, like I wouldn't be, be bringing beer in there because – just the volume, but or that or a whiskey or something you can bring in a little bit. Nice, nice little luxury, and mm -hmm. that, that's enough. That's enough for me. Something like that. And we try to we try to make uh, 
the meal's simple and light, but also something really tasty, so we can really enjoy it. Yeah. 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 So, so what what is your background, Brandon? In in you know like backcountry, have you done a lot of backcountry camping yourself? Okay, so um, my parents they did they've been all through the park. Uh, they've done portaging and backcountry camping uh, as long as uh, as long as I can remember. They would go for days at a time, and uh, they've done. I think they did a ten day trip uh, not that long ago, actually. And my dad's in his sixties, so they're actually very um, very accomplished back there. So I went with them quite a bit in my teen years until I moved out. So I did a lot of it. And then after I was out of the house, uh, not too much, but I've always been uh, into the camping and canoeing type thing, just never kind of backcountry, more local stuff. So I've always been kind of keeping up with it, but I haven't been back there a lot. So, well, until recently. And so it, it is kind of familiar. I'm just a little bit rusty with it. It's not completely out of, the, out of my background. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So have you always always been a northern boy though? Because I know you guys oh, yeah. are in uh, sort of the northern area there. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I'm stubborn enough to just kind of stubborn as a mule. I'm stubborn enough to just be like, okay, you know what? I don't care. I'm doing this. I don't care how hard it is. I'm just gonna do it. And so I, uh, yeah, we our first uh, our first uh, trip together. Um, I'm like, I'm carrying the canoe, and I'm not stopping one time. We're gonna do the portage. Every portage. <laughs> We're gonna do. We're not gonna stop. We're just gonna keep going. And we did. It felt like five k, but she pointed out it was only three. <laughs> and it felt like five, You're and I was like, admitting it. Well, you did show me on the map. <laughs> yeah, we had anyway, to that. Um, I was like, just determined. I'm like, I'm not gonna go in there and look like a big suck compared to Alexis. <laughs> I got. You know, I got to assert my dominance here. That's right. <laughs> It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. Quick question for you, Brandon. Uh, somebody in the chat here was asking, hey, Brandon, do you use a Vermeer or a Bandit? I, I use a Vermeer. Vermeer? Yeah, what? yeah. Can you tell us what a Vermeer and a Bandit is? Uh, they're just companies that produce like chippers and that kinds of things. Okay. I'm not real familiar with Bandit. Uh, I know that I I know they make chippers. I don't know if they make stump grinders, but my, uh, my chipper is a Vermeer and my stump grinders are Vermeer. I've had success with them. Uh, some of the other big companies in the area, they like Bandit. Um, and I think it's kind of just one of those things, like uh, if you're in construction, you might be like a DeWalt guy or you might be a Milwaukee guy. I think they're both good. I just kind of got familiar with Vermeer and uh, went that way, but yeah. <laughs> He's a, so a little more about the guy who asked that question. He's a, a salesman for Vermeer. Oh, okay. And he says Bandit is junk. <laughs> okay, well there, there you go. <laughs> There you go. There might be a sponsorship opportunity here. Connect. There we go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's what it's cool. all about. So yeah. I want to get into uh, a little bit of a back and forth thing here now with uh, shooting videos for, for both different things. So Karina, your, your focus is on the outdoors. And, well, obviously, and uh, on uh, timber meets. But we're, how, what's the difference between shooting backcountry stuff versus shooting what you're shooting for timber mates. Is there a big difference? Great That's question, really Dennis. Question. Um, <laughs> it's been uh, quite a learning curve because uh, my like, so when I'm posting videos for Alexis Outdoors, it's very much people like around the 40 minute mark. That would not fly for timber mates uh, in just in our, you know, recent experience with it. Um, people would probably just get pretty bored. Um, so it's a very different style. And I've, I've been able to um, start to learn some different editing tricks and stuff for Timbermates because I have to do kind of a different style of video. So it's been really, really interesting. Um, shooting shots and stuff, uh, also a little bit different, but, um, but pretty similar uh, for the most part uh, as far as actually filming it. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously now I have to take into account like uh, people all around watching and I have to take into account equipment that's uh, on the go and you know the chipper's running while I'm trying to like run the camera over here to get that shot and <laughs> and so also also we just about took out a camera on a tripod the other <laughs> yeah. day I, I seen that in the video I seen that yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was close. Uh, that was close. There's a lot of stuff happening, a lot of things moving. Yeah, I have to be, I, I have to really uh, focus on the job first and foremost um, when I'm filming for Timbermates because obviously a lot can go wrong when you have very sharp objects all around and 
big machinery, big machinery, and he's throwing branches, and so it's a bit of a, it's been a learning curve, but but really fun, and and I've been enjoying the editing process as well, uh, putting more different music and stuff on. Uh, it whereas put, it puts a tremendous strain on her, I notice, like when we're 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 there to to make a living and do a job, right? And she's got to at the same time all the physical work of like uh, I try to come down and help uh, with the chipping and and stuff like that, but it's she's trying to she's getting all the gear set up setting up the tripods and figuring out the shots and trying to do that at the same time as keeping up as with. keeping up with so if you've ever done been like a groundy for for, the, for a tree company it's exhausting and it's really difficult work now add into that you want to be creative and be able to you know do nice shots and and get make sure all the cameras are rolling and the batteries are on and your cards aren't empty and <laughs> all the stuff that's going on with all the noise and all the action at the same time so it puts a huge strain on her shoulders to to do all that at the same time because i'm useless when it comes to the anything other than like here this gopro is going on your helmet so, <laughs> so try to look where you're working yeah instead of like <laughs> yeah <laughs> I got I got the kill, most killer shot for you. You got you got to get Brandon out there on a limb and put like a doesn't have to be a GoPro, but one of those cheap China Chinese knockoff ones, right? You know, twenty nine dollar Amazon job at the end of the branch and have that thing ah, falling down. It's got to be a awesome <laughs> shot, right? There you go. Right. That's my input for timber mates. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you almost lost the camera, but you recently lost the drone, didn't you? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell us about the drone. <laughs> so it was like pretty much very new. I'll, yeah, I'll start and you finish. Okay. That. So, so that was the um, like 100 foot white pine over top of a cottage and it was a remote job. Um, really tricky to get into. It was a one way road and um, power lines all over the place and the tree was pretty far. So I was set up quite a long ways away. Anyway, so I couldn't get all the way to the top. So I decided to, I, I couldn't just let the top even drop. Uh, there just wasn't going to happen. So I ended up tying it off. So basically when I do this, the uh, I tie the tree like, and then I tie it again to itself lower and flip, like let it flip over and just hang. Then I can go down and get at it. Anyways, so I had to get a rope up because there was winds and, and I, it had to go in a very specific place and uh, it wasn't just balanced the way I wanted it to go. So she had to pull on this rope for me. We had it tied off, pulling the rope, but she also wanted to get the drone shot. She, so she had the drone all set up in a great spot, had to like put the remote and the screen down for that. Focus on this, which is a critical point in making sure that this goes right, because if it goes over on me or somewhere else, it could be really bad. So she had to focus on that and steer this drone. And in the middle between doing two things, wind picked up and knocked the branch came up or it or the remote got bumped or something happened and it just clipped uh, i think it clipped the tree we took down in part two actually i think it was that tree. yes it was that tree yeah yeah and it clipped that and then i'm like okay that was perfect and then she's like uh I'm like oh i got some bad news that's yeah. great and all but uh yeah and i'm like oh, i can't no. find the drone <laughs> yeah so we couldn't even oh, find no. it i'm looking in the trees i'm like who knows where it could be right oh Anyway, it yeah. fell a good distance. It, yeah, it like it was broken into a bunch of pieces. And did you have the drone insurance at least? No, so I didn't even hear. I didn't even know. <laughs> the drone insurance they offer you, but nobody ever buys, right? No, I, didn't even offer it. I got it through Amazon, so uh, I didn't either. I didn't see the offer. I'm also very like fly by the seat of my pants, and so I don't look into these things. Yeah. <laughs> right, Ben. <Mitch>? Correct. <laughs> Never <Never> comment. <laughs> That's funny. Anyways, I I was able to replace the drone and get the insurance on the new drone um, for, you know, I didn't have to buy a whole new setup, so it worked out. <laughs> well, there you go, everybody. Watch, watch more watch more Alexis Outdoors. And are you monetized yet for Timber Meats? Just. We just, just? Was yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Good. We Congratulations. That's awesome. That was fast. Yeah. Too. yeah, yeah. It was, well, we got Six we weeks. had a little bit of help from some shout outs from. Um, this this little um, this little channel called Alexis Outdoors. I don't know if you've heard of it. <laughs> a little bit of pull there, right? <laughs> Just to get show me a little more creative. I need help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. So what 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 was that? Was that the uh, uh, was that the Mavic Two or the Mavic One? The Mavic. Uh, it was the Mini. So it's the, the Mini Two. The Mini. Okay, so it was the oh, it's the new uh, HD one too, eh? Or the four uh, K. Uh, yeah, I think so. 
Yeah. So it's that uh, sucks. Yeah, it's like the cheapest one out there. They made it like just under the 250 gram mark or whatever. Yeah. Uh, our uh, earlier guest is asking, are property owners pretty receptive to filming when you're working on their property? So yeah. far. Yeah. Um, we've, we haven't had any issues and we usually tell them yeah. uh, what we're up to and check with them beforehand um, unless there's nobody around and, that's, and then we just kind of go ahead and do it. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, they've been pretty good and maybe someone can answer this. I've always kind of been wondering what – people love to come and film us while we're working. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm like, kind of like, okay, like, I don't mind, but I kind of feel like if they can film me, I should be able to film me too, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. So, but no, everyone's been really good about it. Uh, people usually get a little bit excited. Uh, they're like, Oh, what's going on here? And then they're like, we tell them, Oh, well, we have a channel and, and then they kind of check it out. And they, uh, we actually, the first, our first video, we, it was a really, really nice couple. And uh, we, we, we told them what we we're going to do. And they said, this is our first video, whatever. And they, they had no problem with it. And they were super sweet. Gave us these, she's a potter. She gave us these mugs after we were done with little pine trees on them. Really nice stuff. Anyway, we, um, we told them uh, to check out the, the video when it was finally up. And they went, found it. And uh, then they sent the link to their family and their daughters that played in that tree their whole life. And then oh, I got wow. this huge, just really, really nice email um, from one of the daughters that said, thank you so much for like, uh, you know, showing everybody this. And she told me the whole story and the background of that tree as they were kids, um, oh, growing up and playing in it. Cause it was a white pine that went up and then just maybe six, eight feet off the ground, just split out into like maybe six huge trunks that just went straight out and up. And so they used to play in it. And there was a whole long story and background about it. So it was really, it was really sweet and touching, uh, for us, especially being our first, our first video. So, mm -hmm. so we've never had an issue with anyone being like, no, no, we don't want that. Uh, so yeah, they, you they, think they want you shooting just for insurance purposes, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's something yeah. ironical. He's yeah. got the video himself. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, true. become a liability in itself. Yeah, oh, that's good. Uh, so yeah, so have you have you had Karina up in the bucket yet? Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got a yeah. story about that. Yeah. Um, so I brought her up on that, that same, um, the hundred foot tall, um, job over the cottage, brought her up to the top there and we, we took some pictures and stuff, uh, to that one. And I actually had her up, I had her doing a little bit of cutting, um, as well. And cause I want to kind of train her a little bit for that. Mm -hmm. So we're still working on that one because I was looking for a little bit of help. I actually had a hockey injury and I hurt my shoulder. So it was really, really hard to work at the time. So I'm like, Hey, maybe you should, uh, Try my job. We were also very like new, yeah, <laughs> yeah, together. <laughs> so, uh, he was trying to impress you. Hey, come on up here, <laughs> <laughs> come up in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> the basket. There's a come on line. <laughs> Jeez. You know what? Here's something you probably don't hear all the time, Brandon. I gotta get you out to my day camp. I got this tree, an old uh, ash mm -hmm. tree that's dead, hanging yeah. right over my lean to shelter. Yep. And and if I'm leaning the wrong way. If I try to cut it down, I, it's coming down. Eh? So you're going to have to cable one thing or something. It's like, holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much what we do. We, we, we do trees that you can't just drop. Yeah. Primarily. I don't think, other than like really, really small stuff, I don't think we've dropped a single tree this year. We do the stuff that's overhanging buildings, complicated stuff because you got to piece it apart one piece at a time. So you yeah. get all the fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> And I guess it helps if you're not afraid of heights, right? Because you're up there. You, yep. you use spurs and stuff like that. You get up in the trees. And uh, not I. Ha I have. Um, I've got all the gear. I I like to work off my lift. Honestly, I'm I'm not a spring chicken anymore, right? So I like the the easy. Uh, oh, I ran out of gas, or I forgot this, or I need this, or my whatever happens, I can just go back down. Um, that's some friends that took the, uh, when they took the Arborist class, they tell you today, they say, um, if you start climbing at 40, you can climb till you're 60. If you start climbing at 20, you'll climb till you're 40. doesn't <laughs> matter when you start, but you'll only get 20 years. And I got a, a, a friend uh, in the area here kind of um, helped me out when I was first starting on my own. Mm -hmm. He worked for Hydro. He's been doing trees his whole life. And his knees are wrecked and his elbows are wrecked. And it's, it's hard on the body, right? So I prefer, that's why when I went into this, I decided I'm either going to invest in equipment and make it easy 
for my body or um, it's going to be a short thing and I'm going to wreck my body if I just, you know, go, go off the spurs. So I decided to invest in, in equipment. And then the nice thing about that is you can do dead trees. You're not relying on that tree to tie yourself off to. And if, if true, if, because you don't like all the gear now is super safe. The training's really good, all load tested. Right. And then you're tying yourself to a tree and often the ones that you're taking down are dead or, or are not great shape. You're tying yourself off to a tree that you have no idea what kind of shape it's in. And for the most part, you know, you, you get good at looking at them and you can realize that this is dead. And a lot of, a lot of climbers won't, won't climb the dead tree because they're smart, but some <laughs> kids will do it uh, and they'll be fine most of the time, but it only takes one time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And if whatever you're tied off to breaks, I've heard of guys up in the tree and the tree goes over. So I like, I personally like going off the, off a lift because I find it a lot safer and it's much faster, a lot easier on the body. That's why, but they're not, they're not cheap. That's that why I'll just climb. Tree, trees can hide a lot of things too, right? Uh, I know oh, yeah. I've, I've seen some trees that look beautiful on the outside and they are hollow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I took that, oh, yeah, a monster yeah. white pine um, and it looked very, very healthy on the outside. There was no signs of anything wrong. And when I got to the bottom, I took it down in pieces. But when I got to the bottom, there was maybe – it had to be about 30 inches in diameter across. There was no more than a couple inches of, of live wood the – uh, around the, the perimeter, the wow. whole inside was all heart rot, completely, completely gone. And this was a massive tree. So it was just probably a year or two or the next storm away from going down. And that's it, crazy. It, it's, that's it, amazing there that it, it can I'm actually. Sure. Like that that that. Long, but it does happen. Yeah. You just really never know until you get in there. Yeah. Yeah. So it, while we're on the spurs, what's the first thing to go? Your knees and hips probably? Really hard on the joints. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, you're probably better off <laughs> using a lift for sure. I like it. Um, it's quite a bit safer and a yeah. heck of a lot faster. Yeah, I, I love the speed of it. I can rip a tree apart so fast with that thing uh, because I have the ability to even like grab a whole chunk of it, swing over, and drop it. Um, I can, and I can, I if there's a limb that's 30 feet long, I can swing out and grab it in pieces that I can just throw, as opposed to having to rope it all down. Yeah. Um, so it's really, really fast. So cool. that, that's kind of why I went that route. Yeah, that's awesome. So we're, we're talking about, uh, like, you know, the, the similarities or the differences between shooting for one or the other. Getting back to, say, uh, Alexis Outdoors, Karina, what, what do you do or how, how do you how do you keep things fresh out there? How, how do you, how do you uh, keep your channel from becoming too repetitive for doing the same thing after, like, time after time? Yeah, so that's a, that is a tough one. And I think in the, the outdoor industry, uh, as far as YouTube goes, is so crowded as well now. So everybody's doing these, you know, day trips and, and canoe trips and winter camping trips. And it all kind of does get a little bit redundant or repetitive. And uh, it's funny because I never, ever got comments like that before. It was, you know, I, I never had an issue with that. And then probably the past year or so, I've been getting a lot of comments that are like, oh, your videos are getting like, you know, kind of the same and you do the same old thing. And mind you, other people are like, oh, I love these videos. So like, it's a hard balance to find, uh, you know, the videos that I know my loyal subscribers really like and also trying to keep it fresh. Uh, it's definitely a challenge. Um, I, I don't really know the formula yet to, to that perfect balance, but uh, just trying to do things a little bit different when I go out, you know, uh, changing up the meals or changing up uh, the areas, even the way I shoot the video maybe and and the things that I talk about. It's, it's pretty tough, but um, that's also why, like, sometimes I won't have a video for a little while because it's just, like, you kind of hit, like, a creative block, I guess. And I'm sure, I'm sure many yeah. creators in all different types of, you know, ways of creation uh, – hit that block and like writers hit the same thing and artists all that stuff so i think it's the same with youtubers <laughs> yeah yeah a lot, a lot of youtubers run into this this whole youtube um block oh yeah it's, yeah it's just uh burnout right yes YouTube burnout you know you can only like i say you can only produce so much of the same video and you're always looking for new content but try and find new content that hasn't been done already yeah but you just have to do it in your own way right and that, exactly. that's people are sold on your product and basically that's what they're going to uh they're going to watch for because they enjoy your product right whether it's been done by he she him her they right whatever so 
Yeah. You know, yeah. That's if people cool. have the right uh, the right frame of mind going into it, I always really enjoy it. Uh, the ones who are looking to complain are always going to find something to complain about. So I just try to keep that in mind. And just uh, another thing is I also do the trips that I like. I try not to do trips just because, oh, well, my subscribers really like this. And it's like, I want to do what I want to do and I'm going to go do it anyways. I don't care if you find it redundant. And yep. the people who love watching my channel see when I'm enjoying myself out there, they see everything from when I'm enjoying myself out there to when I'm just doing it for views or, you know, so I try to never ever get that way. I've, I've made that um, kind of a, a goal for myself ever since I started Alexis Outdoors. Like I don't ever want to do stuff just because of the money or just because of the viewers uh, that complain about stuff and, you know, are, are trying to, I don't know, be negative about it. It's just like, I just do what I want to do and people love that. And the ones who don't, well, they can, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Bro Brooke here hit it on the nose. Keep filming your adventures. Who cares if it's similar to another video? It'll still be different in its own way. Those who don't like it can skip past it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about that earlier about these uh, nasty nillies that we, you know, every YouTuber gets from time to time in their channels, you know, and it's like, the best thing to do is not let them get to you because you know all yeah. they're out there is to they're out there to just try and rattle your cage, right? And yeah. You, they win if if they get that rattle, right? So. Mm -hmm. Which they do sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just gotta look past it, Karina, by all means. That's all. So, what 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 have you got planned for the summer? You got any uh, big adventures planned? Uh, big trip, perhaps? Or yeah, um, mostly just just canoe trips and trying to go into different places that I haven't really been before. I would love to hit up Tomogamy this year. And I also want to do some collaborations with, with some other people, you know, we're finally out of lockdown and I think it's time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Next, uh, not Father's Day weekend, next weekend, I'm gone. <laughs> yeah. And it sucks I have to wait that long. <laughs> well, you told me, she says, you're not going away for Father's Day. The girl's got something planned for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <I'll do> it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, just uh, we're going to do some canoe trips together. We have, you know, we've only really done one together. So anything we'll be happy with uh, as far as canoe trips. And yeah, I think that's we're just going to kind of take it as it as it goes, because uh, with COVID and stuff, you can never plan too far ahead these days. <laughs> That's right, yeah, because you never know what Ford's going to do to us in another two weeks, right? Exactly. <laughs> backwards again or pull that carpet out from under our feet. Yeah, it's okay. You can pull the carpet out. I'm still going. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't going to stop me. I'm going to go incognito, put on a black hat and a mask and gone. But wait, <laughs> that's me all the time anyways right now. I right? <laughs> just want to shout out a quick guy in the comments. Jesse Fox, he says we're coming to fish with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we do, we do want to do a lot more fishing as well. We were just out with Brittany and Tunis. That's yeah. a video I have coming out soon. So you guys yeah. got to stay tuned for that. But uh, yeah, lots of fishing. And Jesse, we'll definitely, we'll definitely go fishing. We have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I got a couple questions here from Pete and Brandon. I'm going to get up on screen here in a minute. But uh, I was just going to say, because it was one of my questions. I know after the episode that I did on couples and uh, Brittany and Tunis, I believe they live geographically pretty close to you guys. And you guys yeah. just did a little uh, day paddle type of thing. What, what was that all about? Yeah, so we did, uh, we yeah. did a little day canoe trip, basically. Yeah, it was um, getting back into fishing a little bit. We went for some trout. Um, we didn't get any fish, but we had a great great day, great weather. Yeah. Um, beautiful spot. We we cooked some pizza on the fire, oh, which was kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, that was kind of interesting. It was really good. Yeah, we had a great day. Uh, just, you know, after being in lockdown for that long, being able to talk to other people. Was <laughs> yeah, nice. That's really nice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, we had a great time. And so the videos will be coming out soon for that, um, for On Freak of Nature and, and uh, Alexis Outdoors. Um, <laughs> we had some laughs. Yeah, yeah we definitely yeah. did. So, those are some of my favorite videos to watch because I know, Karina, you, you did a collaboration uh, with the Bairds way back, right? Yeah. And I always thought that's a, such a cool concept when you get a bunch of YouTubers together and they do the collaboration. And you, as, as YouTube viewers, like myself, right, I get to see 
both angles, right? So like yeah. your shots versus <laughs> their shots. And it's like, and you could see where they overlap and stuff like that. I, I enjoy watching them videos because it, it's so cool, right? I always you know, love that too. Yeah. Like uh, when <laughs> Joe, Joe <laughs> sorry, Tunis, turn off your thing for a second. I was just telling her, I said, so Tunis is a little bit newer in the editing thing. Turn this, <laughs> Tunis, you turned it off, right? Okay, good. Um, <laughs> I, told, I told Karina, I said, you got to edit this better than him. Like you got to show him. <laughs> He's like, you know. Tunis is more picky than me. It sounds like though for editing, so it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be interesting. I'm really excited to see the, the two takes <laughs> on the day. Uh, yeah, it will be interesting. Yeah, but I, I, I put a little pressure on. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I think it was on Instagram. I seen the picture that you guys posted of the four of you out there. Yeah. And you all look so cute in your your matching bug jackets. Yeah. That's <laughs> cool, <isn't it>? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, we had a really good time, but like for collabs and stuff, I always enjoyed like watching when Joe and Doug would go on a trip together. Yeah, yeah. Seeing their banter like from one side and then from the other. Oh my goodness, it's so funny. So I yeah, yeah. love collaboration and it's really fun to do. And I think it also uh, freshens up the channel a little bit. Like like we were talking about earlier, you know, you kind of get out of your whole creative zone and you, you get to add some other uh, – What's the word like some other aspects to it just freshens it up people are like oh cool they did a collaboration so yeah yeah, yeah. You've been, uh, who, else, who else did something like that uh john and aaron did it with uh you right? yes and yeah. Brad, yeah. yeah that's right okay yeah so that like, like i say that the whole concept of seeing it coming from different angles is, is, is it's really a neat thing you know it uh it almost makes you feel like you're watching the same video but you're not yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's it's Great. really interesting. It's it's fun. It's really yeah. fun. Yeah. So and, and Tunis and Brittany obviously stand up people. Like they're they're an awesome. Yeah. 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 They're awesome. We had a really good time with them, and it won't yeah, be the I'm last. Looking forward time. to meeting them this summer too. So. Yeah. Okay, I'm just looking for the questions. I I move my cursor just that, like <laughs> that much. And okay, so <laughs> somebody was asking. I think it, I. I think it was Pete. Maybe hey, he was asking, "What's your favorite uh, backcountry?" Saw Brandon. If I could bring it in. Oh my goodness. There you go. <laughs> so yeah. okay. You might have opened a can of worms on this one. Yep. Um <laughs> I I like her little the little saw, like the little hand, like the fold out saw, and some of the, the other one's really cool. Um is that a silky? Okay. Yeah, so we took a silky yeah. on our first canoe or on our canoe trip, and then uh, yeah. And then, and so and obviously, I'm my other saws if, like I could, that. if I could bring it out, it, I'd bring a Husky Marta 572, but it, <laughs> it's a monster, right? No, but um, actually, if I could carry the weight, I would take like an electric saw in there because, so for me, this is this is my problem. I go out there and, you know, those little saws they make are really light and they're great for backcountry. But I do this all day. So I sit there and I'm like, this is ridiculous. I should have been done an hour ago on this. So I find it really tedious to use something um that i do for work so uh <laughs> oh i think uh i think we're frozen oh no we're back okay um yeah i just find it tedious uh and it's kind of a bit of a running joke that so i would bring an electric saw honestly just because i, I hate prepping wood it feels like work to me and especially when i have to use this what feels like a ancient tool to me because it's like what i do right um, Meanwhile, I'm like, I yeah, love she loves that the part. idea of like going back to the Stone Age and having to do things the hard way. So I love it. What we do is she cuts the wood and I split the wood. Uh, yeah, the bigger stuff. Like oh, yeah. when we're out for like a like a longer, not the yeah. little stuff, but yeah, I do the splitting and stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> I would love to bring a real saw, but you just can't if you're out there. <laughs> yeah, good. And then, sorry, I had to go and I had to show that super chat. Thanks, Mallory. Much appreciated. I uh, appreciate the support and. I lost my question. The, the next question, I, it was some by somebody who was asking what your favorite non-Canadian beer is. Mm, that's you, eh? Ooh, non-Canadian beer. Mm. Is Lake Canadian? Yep. Oh, I'd have to think about that one. I haven't really tried many non-Canadian beers as far as, yeah, I don't, I, I couldn't tell you. Maybe Coors, Coors Banquet. It's pretty good. I don't yeah, think. They make that in Canada. <laughs> Really? <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 don't, I, 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 I I'm, mostly, I'm mostly a craft beer guy, but when I do, it's always a Molson product that I drink if it's uh if it's local beer. Yeah, so that's that's the same with us basically, except for Lakeport. I would drink in Lakeport. 
Yeah, you guys are on Lakeport tonight. Eh? Yeah, toast everybody. Remember, tonight's the toast night, right? Cheers, guys. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm just looking for a couple other questions here in the uh, chat. There's been a few, and I always I always lose my spot. There was a funny comment earlier from uh, from Russell from uh, Raspberry Rock was saying that when we were talking about the drones, he says if you don't crash a drone, you're not you're not trying to get the good shots. <laughs> so true. I like that. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> How true is that? Uh, here we go. Uh, yeah, Ju Julia B was asking there. She's not sure if you mentioned it or not, but do you do you ever climb with uh, just a rope and harness? Yeah, like, yeah. I um, for speed wise and stuff like that, I typically just take the jobs that I can get get into with my machine. Uh, but yeah, and honestly, I haven't had the need to in quite a few years because I can get up really high with mine. So I can get almost to the top of any tree. So, and once you get to a tree that I can't take down with my lift, it's a crane job because they're, they're just that big. Um, so yeah, for the most part, um, I was thinking of actually, this is another thing. Um, we we're going to actually do a little bit of climbing uh, together. Yeah. I wanted to learn. Yeah, so that was something where uh, once we find some time, our schedule is pretty tough uh, to find time for stuff like that. And maybe when, maybe in the fall when the weather's a little bit cooler and it's a little, a little more comfortable up there. Uh, but yeah, that's something we wanted to kind of do together and do a little bit of climbing and stuff, just more more for for a hobby. And uh, you know, you never know though, it might turn into I'll just send you to work and I'll just do. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, then you can be the foreman, right? Yeah. <laughs> One more really quick question from Gord. I see he's put this in here a couple times uh, already here. He's asking, have you ever dropped a chunk of something on a house or a car, et cetera? Let's... I know you had the close call with the little boomerang piece that almost took Karina's head off. <laughs> Let's see. The only time that's ever happened, uh, and it wasn't didn't really do any damage, it was um, there was a storm came in, and like a heavy, heavy snow late spring and took a whole bunch of branches off a of white pine that was other than other than like the snow just was too heavy for it and it made a hole in this guy's house already so we had it kind of tarped up anyway it was a crane job and i was um craning some of the pieces off and then the piece that i had taken off was um kind of brushed up against something else and kind of broke some other pieces off as it was going so a couple small pieces fell down dented the eaves trough a little bit. Everything was kind of already damaged from the, from what had fallen before. But honestly, I've never really had, I don't think I can think of anyways. I don't think I've had any, anything major at all. Um, I, I tend to work pretty slow and, and methodical. I, I really don't want to get to that point because it's like, it's literally like 30 second difference between just taking your time and being a little bit more careful as opposed to you're into like, you know, a whole another ball game of okay, now I got to repair this roof or whatever. Can we deal with this? So I try, I try to um, not ever have that happen. That's about the worst of it, though. Yeah, I guess, I guess if you have insurance, doesn't mean you want to use it, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't want to go there. No. No. So. Wow. Okay, so we're uh, we're about ten minutes after eight o'clock, and I'd like to get the uh, swag giveaway taken care of. Yeah. Um, and then we'll then we'll invite some people up if anybody wants to join in on the, uh, the conversation for a minute or two with a question. I'm just going to post first the uh, the invite right now into the live chat here on YouTube, not on the Facebook feed. There we go. So if anybody has a question for uh, Brandon, Karina, or myself, whatever, uh, <laughs> by all means. Feel free to join in. Uh, just make sure you uh, shut off the volume on your YouTube and just go by the StreamYard volume. All you need is a camera and a microphone on your computer, and you're good to go. Um, for tonight's swag giveaway, we have a couple of items to give away. Uh, I'm just going to put running across the bottom of the screen because, as usual, please do not put your answers in the chat over here. What I need you to do is please send your answers to the question to coasprize at gmail.com and you have until saturday evening at 11 o'clock just want to say last week we had that swag giveaway biggest swag giveaway uh participation we've had thus far this season we had 160 entries that's their like, one of those to this old guy yeah 160 entries uh 162 to be exact and that's uh that's pretty incredible so 
you know what? Get in. You have a chance to win, and that's a good thing. So send your answers to COASPRIZE at Gmail, and you're saying, what's the question? Just say it. Okay, tonight's question is, let me find the <laughs> right button. Here it is. What year did Karina launch the YouTube channel, Alexis Outdoors? Okay, Karina mentioned kind of. I mentioned it for sure. <laughs> if you're not sure, go to Alexis Outdoors, go to her video collection, and go and check out her very first video, and you'll see what year her first video was launched. So up for grabs tonight, we got a the regular Canoe Hound Adventures swag package, which is going to consist of like some patches and some decals and a nice reflective decal. We also got uh, some stuff from Algonquin Outfitters, uh, a voucher. It'll be one of two, either a free or a $25 off purchase uh, stuff. But the free one is for like a free rental. Um, Karina's got some fabulous Alexis Outdoor decals. Yeah, really, really great company. Printed them out for me. Yeah. So nice. I know I use the same people for my their sponsors. <laughs> and then, of course, we also have, uh, if you caught the very beginning of the show, Kevin from Kevin Outdoors is uh, going to be donating uh a copy of his backcountry eats uh look basically it's a backcountry cookbook and it gives you all kinds of really neat things uh in there and by all means he will be sending that portion to you so the winner will be notified i'll collect your uh, your mailing address and i'll share it with the other parties here so question is what year did karina launch her youtube channel alexis outdoors gotta find the answer so there you go and uh I will pull that question off. I'll leave the email address floating across the bottom. And as I said, guys, one man show here. And that's <laughs> good. So we do have somebody in the basement I'm going to bring up. Uh, it's a familiar face to me because I follow her channel as well. We have Mallory from. Hi. And how are you doing, Mallory? I'm good. How about you? Oh, you know, living the dream. You're in Quebec. We're in Ontario. We have some freedom finally, and we're all jacked about it. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're getting a little bit of freedom too. It's it's feeling pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, okay. definitely. You got a question for Brandon and Karina today? Yeah, I do actually. Uh, hello. Hi. Nice to finally meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> so, uh, when I first met um, Karina, it was on Rainnance Bushcraft and like the wild, uh, like there was a whole bunch of people on the panel. I think it was Joe Rabinette and a whole bunch of people. She was in the chat. And so I went over to her channel and I saw that she went scouting for land with her horse, you know, and I'm into horses and all that stuff. And I was like, wondering, are you ever going to go camping with your horse one day or? Yes. Find a spot? Great question. Great question. Um, I would have loved to. Uh, unfortunately, my circumstances have changed quite a bit. I still technically own my horse. Uh, for those who don't know, my horse's name is Samson. He's like the coolest horse there is. Mine is yours, probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I was I was planning to do like a whole bunch of campouts and stuff with him. And then we ended up moving and I just didn't have us. Uh, so where we live now is like not farmland at all. It's, it's very much more uh, like deep forest and stuff like that here. Um, and the place he was at at the time uh, when we were moving – like he was just being really, really well taken care of. I, I've always boarded him. I've always wanted to have my own farm, but never got there. Yeah. And uh, anyways, he was just in a great place. The owner was amazing. She takes amazing care of her horses and Sam was super happy there. So I was like, you know what? Why don't you just take Sam? It saves me the headache of trying to find uh, another owner for him, trying to sell him to all these people who like just want to ride them into the ground basically. Yeah. Um, so she kept him and she's like, if you ever want him back, like, just let me know. And oh. he's in a great place. And I would love, I, I, I still love it. Like that's been part of my entire life. I grew yeah. up with horses. Like that's, that's part of me. Um, so maybe one day. Uh, and definitely, I think, um, I don't know, maybe we'll do like a trip out West or something, try to go camping with horses. I know there's a lot of cool oh, yeah. there. Go wrangling a little bit and like just. Totally yeah. Out West and, uh, that I would love to do that one day. That'd be yeah. So awesome. Yeah. It's been, oh, it's always been on my bucket list. So maybe one day we'll do that. And, uh, but for the meantime, uh, I don't get to really see my horse as much as I would like to. And, uh, yeah. Now, Karina, do, do you do like barrel racing and stuff like that? Did I see that somewhere? I used to. <laughs> used to? I used to. Yeah. So when I was growing up, I was in 4 H. Basically, I started, uh, 
like I've always kind of been around horses, but I was also doing like hockey and soccer, playing competitively and stuff. And then I wrecked my knee in school. I had to get knee surgery on my ACL. And ever since then I was like, okay, well, I can't play sports anymore. I got to find something to do. So then I went like mostly full into horses, Uh, went to some shows, nothing too serious as far as gaming and (laughs) stuff like that, but always really enjoyed it. Uh, I was more of a like ride bareback around the farm type of girl. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I did a little bit of barrel racing back in the day. Really enjoyed it. It's really fun. Cool. Uh, and you, you have another hidden talent, too, that you really don't push too much. I've heard you play guitar and sing. You <laughs> I have know. a fantastic voice. And you told really, me that. <laughs> huh? I was like someone said, you no, should play tonight. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Jeez, a lot of Canadians on. are very talented. Come on. <laughs> come on. Put together a theme song for Canadians Out There Adventure Show. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, you, you do. You do. You have a pretty voice. At, I've always wondered, do you? Do you ever use any of your your music in uh, in your videos, or have you ever thought of using it, some of your music in your videos? So, in all of my Lexus Outdoors videos, any music you'll ever hear is my own guitar playing. Um, so, I, I'm not like amazing or anything. Um, I I just kind of grew up like playing songs around the campfire and stuff like that. Nothing professional or anything like that. I never took lessons. Um, it was all kind of self taught and stuff like that. But um, but I do play a little bit, and I tr- I'll try to put together a few riffs, and and I just think the guitar music does does really well in the outdoors videos because it's, it's kind of calm and soothing, kind of goes with nature and stuff. And then the Timbermates videos is where I actually pay for music on on Timbermates, and so I've been experimenting <laughs> with more music there and and the editing for that. But uh, but yeah, all all my music on Alexis Outdoors is is my own guitar playing, and um, it's usually inspired by. Uh, like music that we all know and hear all the time. But. There you go. So much yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> How about you, Brandon? Do you have any musical talents? I can barely play a CD player, and I'm <laughs> aging myself playing that. <laughs> no, my dad plays uh, piano, and he put me in lessons. And no, no, I. Uh, she's been teaching me a little bit of guitar, but it's it's pretty awful. In fact. Um, yeah, it's probably best we just move on. That's really bad. <laughs> we all got to start somewhere else. We all have our forces, right? right? We, uh, yeah, I, it wasn't it wasn't my thing. Our strengths, I mean. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Not one of mine. No. <laughs> I would have a whole bunch of questions, but I'll leave the room for, for, for somebody else to, to hop up. I'm sure there's many other people that want to. Yeah, somebody else just popped in. Well, you know what, uh, Mel, you have the link if you'd like to pop in a little later on for into the green room uh, after the show. Feel free to do so. All right. Yeah, really good to see you, Mallory. Yeah. Great to see you. Thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. It's been a while, so figured. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen you. Hope things are going well in the homestead. Yeah, just crazy busy. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. All okay, right. Mal, we'll talk soon. Thanks. See you. And here's another familiar face to you, uh, Karina. I'm quite sure our good friend Nate, Nate Muskoka. What's hey. going on, Nate? <laughs> nice. <laughs> what you eating? <laughs> no, I think he's just trying to rub in that he's lakeside right now. Are you I don't actually here towards you, Karina, or me? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I, oh, that's just, um, I just portaged in here uh, after <laughs> work, so I'm sitting on a little patch of crown land just on the Perry Simon Muskoka line. Oh, that's awesome. And wow. I have just, I think I have just enough bars to make this work. So I was kind of wondering <laughs> if it would work. And if I like put the tripod in like a certain spot, then I get just enough bars where it doesn't lag. So it's, <laughs> you know what, Nate, you're, you're more clear there than you are when you're, uh, when you're <laughs> that's true, actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's good, no, except for the, except for the whole data thing, that's going to be another story. But, uh, <laughs> So what have you got? You got a question for Brandon and Karina? Yeah, sure. And I hope it's not something that I missed or I like uh, I missed when I was, you know, when I in the the earlier part of the show. But um, just given that you have this uh, like a a new channel on the go, which is super cool. uh, Have any of the goals for Alexis Outdoors kind of shifted or changed or uh, have they kind of stayed the same? Or do you have, you know, bigger goals now or or has it been kind of... um, is it hard to juggle both? That's a really good question. <laughs> um, where do I start with this? Um, so I, 
I think it's safe to say they've maybe shifted a little bit because obviously uh, our situation is a little bit different now. And um, but definitely have no intention of stopping Alexis outdoors or slowing down on Alexis outdoors. Um, I think uh, I think it's shifted in a way that I'm not so uh, so focused on growing it and getting to like those, you know, like those milestones, like, Oh, you have to hit 500,000 subs. You have to hit a million subs. Eventually. I think that now is kind of in the background that will happen organically. And uh, now it's a lot about just like us kind of bonding, growing uh, timber mates. Uh, Cause we've been really enjoying doing that together. And uh, what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. We just said I should give ukulele a try. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, we, we have this thing where we can sense each other's every minute. Anytime and something everything. is different, or like yeah. what's it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> there's a real connection there, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, not shifting too much as far as Alexa outdoors go. Uh, I still want to do like bigger and cooler trips as much as I can. And uh, and you know, we'd like to hit up some new parks. Like I was saying earlier, I wanted to I really want to go check out like mogging and stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I still want to do really cool trips for Alexis Outdoors, definitely, but also really enjoying Timbermates and just something that we're able to grow together. And it's, it's kind of really cool to, to have something like that between us. And, uh, yeah, hope that answers <laughs> that question. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, obviously everyone, as far as I know, only has 24 hours in a day, right? So, yeah. um. And I think maybe maybe another question, given given that you've got two channels now, and then you know uh, the same amount of time in a day, and and uh, kind of just shifting. Well, I I love the idea that you've decided to kind of just grow Alexis outdoors organically and just kind of do your thing with that, which is I which is awesome. But how do you, in terms of goals that you have set for yourself or or that channel, um, how do you kind of balance or juggle? Um, you know, wanting to learn maybe more skills, like more bushcraft skills to have on it versus maybe going to different places to just straight up canoe trip. Like, is there a priority that you kind of set now where like you and Brandon have like some goals for longer trips and maybe some of those weird bushcraft skills have maybe kind of like taken a, a back seat or is there a balance you're kind of strike between that? Because I mean, we all know those skills take time and those trips take time and sometimes the two cannot <laughs> yeah. coincide. Yeah, another really great question. Um, so I think for me, it kind of goes by season. Um, so we're in Timbermates and like our, our tree business is really slow um, in the wintertime. And that's usually the time that I love to do my winter trips where it's kind of uh, more of a base camp style. And then I get to practice those those bushcraft skills and stuff like that more so in that time. And then uh, uh, more of the summertime is, is canoe tripping season and and just trying to take advantage of that and, you know, do smash out those like bigger, better trips every time. Uh, so I think that's, that's kind of the balance that, that we're finding. Um, we did want to, we did talk about this actually on our trip with uh, Tiris and Brittany. Uh, we talked about the, your, your show last week. You got us, you got us hooked. We want to do the, uh, the meanest link, but I think what we'd like, <laughs> but I think what we probably end up doing just uh, in the, in the near future is maybe break it down in quarters or something just because we, we couldn't invest that much time at one time and what we want because eventually we'd love to kind of have a goal of seeing how quickly we could do it like as a personal uh personal goal for ourselves but i thought if one of the questions talking to what was the name again sorry the uh the couple of the girls that, uh, that did it chris and, julia. chris and julia one of the questions i had for her was like how do you because they you end up canoeing at night if you're going to do this in any reasonable time right how do you navigate and i thought you know what would be interesting is to to do it first figure out you know where you're going so you're not in the dark trying to do this for the first time so we'd love to while we have young girls do it in quarters maybe and then maybe eventually when the girls are older and we could get away for two weeks or something do do the whole thing together that would be an incredible goal for us yeah yeah mm -hmm. Actually, I think uh, Chris actually touched on that in that episode too. She mentioned that there was a secret net that she had in her organization and she doesn't want to reveal it because she wants to expose it in her uh, her documentary, right? So, yeah. yeah. Is it two billion lumen spotlights? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. 
Karina won't have that because that's extra gear to carry. That's she, too heavy for me. She acts like a peasant, right? Yeah. Was, they're, Brandon and Karina are going to have like the Hunger Games where a little parachute comes down out of the sky. <laughs> I like right. that. Yes. So we'll leave little food pouches for us the first time we do it. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Great idea. And we're going to do uh, what three words on, on every portage sign so we can find it in the dark. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good idea. I, I actually just downloaded that app not too long ago. That's a pretty neat app, isn't it? Yeah. It is interesting. Yeah, Brandon yeah. like got me on it, and I was like, "Oh, that sounds kind of dumb." <laughs> and I started using. It. I was like, "This is really cool." Well, yeah. yeah well, just in her, her last video, she was she was gone. So normally, um, she lets me know kind of throughout the day where she is and how she's doing because she's by herself out there, right? So I worry a little bit. And uh, so normally, I get a get a response but it was quite a few hours so i finally i finished work and i'm like you know what i should probably just you know go check on her and uh she had she had the app she told me where she would had parked so i just navigated right to it and got to where she went into the the water and i was only waiting there 10 minutes and she was fine but it was kind of nice to know that um you know someone can say i'm i'm here and and you can just navigate there uh, without any problems at all, uh, without even cell data or whatever, you can just, it'll bring you right to it without, because if she had to tell me where that was, I never would have found it. Like if something actually had happened. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's really, really incredible. You had that in your video, did you not, uh, Karina? Yeah. You, you yeah, looked it, a little choked up. Me? Yeah. <laughs> no. Like it was somebody surprised the heck out of you. Like, <laughs> 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 we'll get out of the way. You got to watch the video, everybody, right? That wasn't yeah. fake. She didn't know I was coming or anything. No, I didn't. And I was like talking to the camera. I was like, so, oh God, there's somebody at the at the, the takeout. And I've been talking to my camera. I'm like, oh, it was Brandon. <laughs> that was awesome. How sweet. Um, <laughs> oh, my wife's not watching. She'll expect me to do stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> my mom is in the live chat, though. Hey, mom, how you doing? I see you there. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so Nate, you just come off the water. Whereabouts? Uh, you said uh, Perry Sound, uh, Algonquin border. Yeah, uh, Lake Nanya to be exact. There, Dennis. Okay. Yeah. Hey, you're just done for the day. No, I'm here for two nights now. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. I should give you a call. I'm coming north next weekend. Not this weekend, but the weekend after. So. Well, you know me, Dennis. I'm I work weekends, but we'll make it happen one of these days. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's why. Yeah, 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 yeah. Karina, do you have any canoe trips planned this summer then? Not not planned planned yet. Just have some ideas of where I want to go. With COVID and stuff, I've learned I don't I don't even want to like plan far ahead because I'll just we can just pick up and go because we both run our own schedule. So <laughs> we're gonna go that that route. <laughs> but we're definitely gonna plan something, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I that'll guess. be fun. The that's another good question for the kind of business that you and you and Brandon are involved in um, and in kind of making your own schedules, especially with the demand in terms of your geographic location and uh, maybe the types of jobs you're doing. Is it actually sometimes easier for you guys to work on a weekend and take weekdays off because of the kind of demand you have? 100%. Yeah, we work almost every single weekend. Actually, we haven't taken a single weekend off nope. uh, since uh, first day of spring, since it, since it got crazy. And with the girls being out of school, that just threw a wrench into it. And yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a must to to work weekends. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. especially with the young kids. <laughs> yeah, with the young kids, that's hard. But the nice part about weekdays off is that no one's out here. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. I see one more person right now in the basement. Okay. Uh, Nate, if you want to pop back into the green room, you know the address. Yeah. We'll talk in a little bit. All right. Yeah. Thanks for popping on, Nate. Yeah, <laughs> nice, buddy. Appreciate it. All right. And next to the live stream, we have uh, Johnny from KilaQuest. How you doing, bud? Good. How y'all doing tonight? Oh, you're a dream. I see you cracked a nice cold one. Yeah, I got. Uh, I have a blonde ale from Big Buck Brewery. It's a brewery up in uh, Gaylord, which is like. About an hour south of the bridge, up there in the lower peninsula, so pretty tasty. Nice. So I got a question for Brandon. So I I haven't had a chance to watch a lot of your videos yet, but I've kind of scanned over. I'm gonna be kind of busy with a lot of stuff going on here. Um, why did you go with a bandsaw style of uh, 
for processing would compared to like a circular saw style, like a like a Lewis mill or something like that. Lucas mill, that's what it is. Um, so for me, I actually went off the um, uh, a local guy that's that was an arborist here for forever. He said, you know what you should do when you're early on is is get a mill. And so I'm like, I actually had no idea. I've never milled anything before that. And I only, I've only had it a year, uh, just over a year now. So uh, I honestly, I looked at uh, mills and I actually didn't see any uh, when I was researching it to like on a, like a full blade. Um, so I don't know what the cost, but this was just kind of a nice, um, I looked at a bunch of them. I found out what was local, what I can do. And I had never run a mill in my entire life when I bought this thing, kind of just the way I am. <laughs> I'm just kind of, all right, we're doing this, figure it out on the way through kind of thing. And um, so I never even really saw that as an option, to be honest. I, I have no comparison to the two. Um, I'm very comfortable with the, with the bandsaw one now. I think the bandsaw ones would, would cut a lot thinner, I would imagine. Um, and a lot of the milling videos I've seen, I haven't seen any of those big, like, full blades. Maybe you would have a better idea of that. So honestly, I just don't have a lot to compare it to. That's just kind of what I went with at the time. That's cool. Yeah, I was kind of curious. I mean, I've seen a lot of uh, guys around here in Michigan, in northern Michigan. They use the bass out, you know, harvesting, you know, walnut stuff like that up here, so they can get that nice live edge look for making tables, you know, shelves and stuff like that. And not too many of them use the, the saw, but I did came a. a a couple channels I've seen where a circular saw is using. I was just curious what the pros and cons would have been. Yeah, I wish it could be more helpful with a full full blade, but uh, the the mill I have is honestly, I, it was the biggest one I could get at the time, and we had to in our last video, we had to I had to cut chunks of it off with the saw. This is a maple, and I can do a thirty six inch piece, and I had to trim it back just to fit it through. Uh, we got some monsters monster stuff up here in Ontario. Um, so uh, they make a new one now. I wish I would have known at the time, but that's just even bigger now. It's never, it's never enough, right? It's never, never enough. enough. <laughs> yeah. So, Very Brian, cool. I, I left you a comment on your last video too about about uh, when you were actually milling and you run into those bolts. It, oh. It's like a crotching bolt, right? Or, um, yeah, I don't know exactly what the the, the, the term would be, but yeah. I, so I've done a couple of repairs like that myself. Um, yeah. Like basically drilling through threaded rod, nut and bolt. Uh, bolt and like a big washer on the other side and it had grown through at least six eight inches and it was completely gone like i had no idea it was even there and so yeah. we actually had we get comments all the time get a metal detector get a metal detector so we got a metal detector and <laughs> you know what garbage. it will not detect anything inside there it just won't really yeah. that, that was my comment <laughs> what <do> I... <laughs> yeah so i was yeah, wondering there, if that would work or not well, we thought we thought that too. We're, we're like, like yeah. Well, yeah, that's a great idea. We'll get a metal detector and try to prevent some of this stuff. But when it's that deep, yeah, you, it will it won't pick it up. The amount that that we uh, like the thickness that we mill, I don't think any metal detector would be able to pick that up. Uh, maybe some of the really really expensive big big metal detectors, but so, in our research, it, it hasn't even. Yeah, been so, so the, the amount of milling we do because we do it like. We do it primarily for ourselves, not not as a production, right? So that's that's a little bit different. The cost of the blades are not crazy, so to the time to it to, to pay oh well, the expense to pay for a huge metal detector that would actually detect that versus the cost of a blade. Um, yeah, it's it, it it's a judgment call. Yeah. So did that destroy your blade? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, gone. So, but we were a little careful. So we caught, um, it destroyed the, there was the first, not, uh, first bolt we caught, destroyed the blade because we, we had no idea. We thought it was a nail. That's usually what you run into and, and the blade will go right through it. It'll wreck it, but it'll go right through it. So I'm like, well, we're into this now. Blade's done. Let's just push through. And I'm pushing and I'm, pu I'm like, it's not going through. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck is that? Right. So we ended up trying to cut it out. But even with the chainsaw, I don't want to hit it with a chainsaw. There goes another chain, right? So yeah. anyway, so we ended up getting close and I chiseled it out with a hammer and finally found it. And then we we're a little bit anxious to that sound. It makes a very precise sound when you hit metal in a tree. And so the second one I just touched and we backed off right away, found it and saved the blade on that one. But yeah. yeah. 
Tony in the comments uh, says, is there a blade double cut both? There actually is metal blades. Yeah. Uh, you can get that will withstand it. We were just talking about that today. Yeah, it's a bimetal blade. It's about three times the price. But if you had a bolt like that, I, I think it would, like, if you had a nail, you'd be fine. But to go for something this big, like, this was a, this is a one-inch threaded rod. This is a really, really big hunk of metal. So I don't think it would hold up to that. I no, mean, but I don't at, think so. at least maybe if you, like, backed off, it, it, would, it, would, it wouldn't save. kill it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I, ironically, how how cool would that be to have a nice piece of live edge with a bolt sticking through it? Eh? like that that. Cross. Yeah, that actually. Cool. Yeah. We, we probably should have taken the time to to try to find <laughs> one edge. It, it was so rusted on there, like it would have been a, it would have been hours to try to cut the one side off and then find it on the other side without damaging more equipment and then pull it through. But yeah, that would have been super cool to have that like that hollow. Um, right through a live edge slot yeah. would be really neat. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. We can really nice well, laugh up, but anyway. Cool. Johnny, where's Colleen tonight? Working. Working, eh? Yeah. Well, I was gonna say you, you, uh, you and Colleen are working on something uh, new and fresh. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So premiere this Thursday will be uh, uh, our segment of uh, just uh, on uh, couples in the back country. What? Um, and, and it's not just you know like uh, hiking and or camping, but it's hiking, camping, trekking, uh, overlanders, any any couples that want to get out into the back or they go out in the back country and do stuff or in general outdoors. So you know we we have a couple big uh, um, hiking couple coming on this Thursday. Uh, they're called Miyagi and Trips, and uh, they do some pretty epic uh, hiking trips out there. So this is your time for a selfless plug. So your your Thursday nights on YouTube. Um, your so YouTube yeah, Thursday nights on YouTube will be uh, uh, premiering at uh, every every Thursday night at seven o'clock, and I think Colleen has us almost booked out to October, so, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of, and, and we're trying to we're mixing it up. Where you know we're having you know uh, hiking people from the U.S. and Canada. Kind of bouncing it back and forth uh, between the countries and such, and then of course, you know, and then um, every one of our aspects, our module, you know, like paddle track camp overlay, and try to just keep that spread out and not have like back to back hiking couples and back to back uh, canoe couples kind of thing. So we we'll kind of make it um, a variety kind of show. That's awesome. Yeah. Really yeah. Oh, by the way, I finally I messaged you guys back today. <laughs> I don't know if it was you or Colleen who got it. But... Oh, that's cool. That's all right. Yeah, we're all busy, so yeah, I, I get. Great. I've been I've been like plugging away. You won't you don't even want to look at my dining room right now. It's just <laughs> what you see is like this big. Oh, I can't tell you, but there's a lot of lights and stuff like that. And I've been just trying to orient them. But yeah, you all, if you, whoever tunes in on uh, this Thursday at seven, yeah, you'll see. It. I don't know if I'll do a back behind the scenes look, but <laughs> yeah, it, it looks like a hodgepodge right now, but it works. <laughs> nice. Well, cool. so I'm looking forward to checking out your uh, your live stream there. It should be a lot of fun. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I, I know the amount of work that goes into them, and I know you guys have it in you to do it. You're motivated. so. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, we got another person. Do you have any more questions for uh, Brandon and Karina? No, nope, that's all I had just for a while on the saw a bit. That's, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Nice well, to say, uh, hi to Colleen. Cheers, y'all. I'll, I'll, I'll let her know y'all said hi. Thanks. Have a great night. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. And we have another newbie in the uh, basement there. Let's see here. We have mm -hmm. Russell from Raspberry Rock. How you doing, Russell? Eee, I can't believe I'm here. Finally, Dennis. <laughs> <always good. laughs> Hi, Brandon, Karina. Hello. This, this is my first time live streaming. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, not on a Friday night, that is, right? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, sorry, on a Tuesday. Oh, shit, I can't even say Tuesday. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, yeah, that is a disco ball, by the way. Um, I have a question for you guys. So... <laughs> So you're outdoors, you're, you're uh, hiking through the Amazon, you're climbing mountains, you're canoeing across the ocean, you're fighting bears. At the end of the day, you, you hunker down, you all take off your boots, and somebody's got really stinky feet. Like your <laughs> eyes are watering, you're going, oh my God, what's happening? What's coming out of the forest to kill us? No, it's somebody's feet. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> what do you do about that? 
you suck it up. <laughs> suck I thought you were going to ask, whose feet are they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they sit there going, oh. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, if it's real bad, maybe get them to like wash their feet in the lake or something. Maybe take their boots and <laughs> throw them. <laughs> There's a bear over there. Let's all throw our boots at the bear. That'll keep the bears away. <laughs> For anybody in the chat, if you want to see more antics like this, tune in to Raspberry Rock on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's join, join the books fast, eh? So I okay. So I I have a problem with stinky feet. Oh, my feet sweat. What can I say? Especially when I'm doing stuff. So I keep uh, I I I use this for the the thing I put my my uh, my webcam on. Lysol. Uh, it's like extra. No, it's not extra strength. I just spray it extra strength. If that makes sense. <laughs> But that's not something you 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 take with you like camping, right? It's not like, hey guys, I got my water bottle smaller than this, right? <laughs> like I take less food than this, but it works here for the cabin, and it works for a. It's a good webcam stand because it's right at the it's right at the right height. Well, you're serious. That's actually your webcam stand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every once in a while, it gets changed out for a new. Uh, <laughs> canister for no, no real reason, <laughs> but once a week. <laughs> <laughs> once a week. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay, Dennis, that was my question. Oh, I'm so excited to be on your live stream finally, Dennis. This oh, is I awesome. thought you were fangirling to order uh, Karina Brandon. <laughs> oh, hell no. Wait, I mean, I mean, sure. I don't award that kind of a response. <laughs> <laughs> it's all you, Dennis. Come on. Well, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, no, I'm the 150,000 uh, <laughs> subscriber guy, right? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All, right. All right. That was my only question. Thanks, guys. You've been oh, awesome. Russell, are you going to be live this Friday night? We missed you on uh, Friday. I am thinking about it. I'm trying to make some healthy choices, which includes not drinking my face off every Friday. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah, uh, but who cares, really? <laughs> you know, I don't like my Friday nights, I play music, I drink, and we do shots, and it's a good time. But uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of drinking. <laughs> hey man, appreciate you popping in. Nice to, see you in the chat nice to meet you, Russell. Nice to meet you guys too. We'll see you yeah. next time. We Take do care. have room for uh, a couple of more questions. If anybody wants to pipe in, I'm just going to drop the link one more time here. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> now, how's that for a question? Eh? <laughs> you know what? That's like real. That's yeah. that's hashtag real questions. So, so, <laughs> that's okay, so he, he didn't ask that. So who's <laughs> who's <laughs> <is it>? mm, <laughs> well, it's a personal question? Oh boy! <laughs> I uh, you have my feet actually. I never, you're not very smelly. He's no, not a very smelly guy. No, I, um, yeah, it's great. It's great for me. We we don't actually have too many problems like that. No, but we're pretty open. Um, yeah, so, we're like you need yeah. a shower. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, I think you need a shower. Or, or is that me? I don't know. <laughs> Tell me if it's is that me or is that you? <laughs> so I, I don't know if I've seen it in the chat tonight, but I'm I'm not sure. Has anybody ever has, has anybody asked where's Grizz tonight? Oh, yes, yeah. someone did. And I, I, I seen, I seen Grizz before. earlier in the mirror when you uh, did a kitty check the one time there. Let man. me show you what Grizz is doing right now. Oh my gosh, this dog. I swear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is what he does. This is how he sleeps. Hey, Grizz. But watch, I bet you anything, he'll still give me a high five. Grizz, high five. Yeah, good boy. <laughs> like the other day when you had him, uh, when you had him howling. Oh my goodness! Oh, funny story about that. So, um, yeah, was it yesterday or the day before? Grizz was outside, and an ambulance or a police car or something went by, and they had the sirens going and everything. And about two minutes later like it was such a delayed reaction i'm just like all of a sudden i hear something outside and it's grizz howling his face off because of the the sirens and stuff and he's just out there he's laying down brandon took a look out and he's just laying there like calmly and just oh just howling away oh my gosh it was so funny oh my goodness 
happens. <laughs> like such a delayed reaction too. You uh, you have him well trained. Did he did he go to any obedience schools or anything like that, or is it just self trained? No, it's the same one I started in actually. When we first started. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's got you trained, eh, Brandon? <laughs> she thinks so. Uh, no, <laughs> he's untrainable. Oh! <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's um, funny. No, yeah, I did the, I did a lot of research. I knew I wanted to bring bring Grizz on all our like camping trips and stuff, so. I did all the research and uh, I've, I used to actually train horses. I used to have my own horse training business and believe it or not, they're actually quite similar uh, horses and dogs as far as like uh, positive reinforcement, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that coupled with, uh, I knew I wanted to do my own training and I wanted him to be exactly what I needed uh, for our trips and it worked out. He's a, he's a really good dog and, uh, and Grizz is too. Mm -hmm. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that. you're obviously you're dog people. You're not cat people. No. No, I don't. Brandon's know. barely a dog person. <laughs> yeah, barely a dog. <laughs> Part of the package, man. Part of the package. It's, yep. yep. <laughs> exactly. When I first met my wife, she came with a cat, and it's like, oh, well, it's part of the package. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. And ever since then, it's been dog. So, yeah. yeah. So, Karina, uh, back back on Alexis outdoors. So. You've, you've done many, uh, many day trips, many adventures, winter camping, uh, overnighters, uh, weekenders and stuff like that. In, in, in all your videos, what, when have you felt the most out of your comfort zone while being out there on a solo trip? Oh, that's a great question, Dennis. Let me think. Um, out of my comfort zone. Uh, one time there was coyotes howling while I was out. Uh, it was like the middle of the night. And it was winter, so it had already been dark for so long because it gets dark here like five o'clock in the winter time. Um, and it kind of threw me for a loop, um, but I was able to kind of overcome it and be cool with it. Uh, I think at that time I was like, "Whoa, this is real!" Like if if they if anything decided like this is the time they want to come and like explore camp or see what this person is up to or whatever like they could just come in and you know it was just Grizz and I um but other than that I haven't really felt too much out of my comfort zone um maybe maybe a few times when like I'm alone and it's winter time and I'm starting to get cold and starting to also I don't know who if many people experience this but like sometimes in the winter um I'll like start to lose energy and get like really hungry, really tired, real start start to get pretty cold. And that's the moment where you're like, okay, I gotta like suck it up and get either get a fire going, get get food going. Like you need to like make a decision there, then and there, or else things are gonna get bad pretty fast. Um, so I think just the realization of that mm -hmm. has hit me on some trips, but for the most part, I haven't felt too much out of my comfort zone. It's funny because uh, you, you mentioned that coyote episode and that, that, that was the one that uh, I was kind of thinking and I had in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, it, it's, it's kind of an unearthing sound. If anybody's never experienced like a coyote in the bush or, or uh, like it, to hear them yipping at a distance is one thing. Yeah. But when you, when you feel like they're like, you know, it's right there. Your camp. Uh, I hadn't, I had an instance like that myself this past winter uh, out at my day camp. Actually, it wasn't even winter. It was like early spring here. A buddy of mine and myself went out to my day camp, and uh, we had we had a coyote like right close. And I, I I did a quick little short video on that, and the thing was like just yipping, like it's like really close. And it's like I'm glad I didn't have my dog. Yeah, because uh, like that that's what they do. Eh? They'll 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 try and lure your dog away, then they yep. attack, right? So. Yeah, I said right in my video, I said, don't ever let your dog wander from camp when there's coyotes making noises and stuff because, yeah, they try to lure the dogs out. And uh, um, but, yeah, it's it's a very unsettling uh, feeling knowing that like a pack of coyotes is yeah. you know, either knows you're there or is just, you know, you think they know you're there and then it starts playing with your mind a little bit when you're alone and mm -hmm. trying to keep the dog closed from not going out because that would just be a bad day. <laughs> if Grizz went out there and yeah. 
So when the two of you go on your canoe trips this year, will you be paddling solo boats or will you be paddling tandem? <laughs> uh, probably mostly tandem, but I've already talked to uh, to Scott over at Swift, and uh, we're gonna try and get get Brandon a well a loner solo boat for at least one trip. Yeah, I would like to do that. Um, I would really like to go on an extended trip solo, but I also just anyone who knows me, I've talked about this before. I love sharing my trips with somebody, and so having someone who loves to do it with me, it's like why would I go solo? You know when Brandon wants to be out there with me too. So uh, yeah, we're really excited because I, I can kind of get to do the whole solo thing uh, and pack all my own gear, all my own, you know, even we could do stuff or shelters. I don't care. Um, just just for the challenge of it, um, seeing how light I can pack and stuff. That's funny. Gonna... You might have stinky feet, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, you know what? Bring, bring Brandon because if you go solo, you're gonna be just thinking about him all the time, anyway. So exactly, there's no. Might well just have him there with you, right? <laughs> oh, so uh, what 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 do we see coming down the pipe for uh, Alexis Outdoors and Timber Mates here? Maybe within the next couple months, anything big and exciting? Or I, I know every video is big and exciting, but anything like big and exciting? Or well, I'll let you do the Alexis Outdoors one. Okay, and okay. you'll Timber Mates one. Yeah. Oh, should we do it the other way? Uh, no, 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 that's way better. Okay. Um, for Alexis Outdoors, it's mostly, mostly just the same old, same old, trying to do some canoe trips. Uh, Brandon, Brandon and I really want to do some, uh, like I was explaining earlier, we want to do some like more kilometers in a day type trips. So like quick, quick, quick pace, um, kind of the style that Joe does. Joe Robinette does a lot of trips, kind of that style. He's not really one to just like kind of take his time through a canoe trip. He'll just like bang out a day. <laughs> like, yeah. So we'd like we'd like to do that style of trip for sure. Also, if I can plug in here for you, yeah. we've got at our disposal uh, on the other side of the river, which is Quebec, hundreds and hundreds of kilometers of all kinds of uncharted. Uh, they call it the Zec or something. And anyway, we're, we're still in the process of researching how their crown land system works, but we've got just untouched stuff over there for as far as you could ever possibly go. So one of the things we were thinking of doing is uh, getting out there and kind of exploring some new stuff, some new lakes some pl some places that, that, you know, no one would ever even know is even there. Uh, and we, we really want to do uh, some winter camping trips on some of the mountains in, in uh, just close to us actually on the other side of the river. Yeah. Uh, amazing views, some great spots. Uh, we just got to, with COVID, everything, we weren't sure what was going on and that kind of threw a wrench everything, but uh, we'd really like to, to hit up some of these really cool spots for, for a winter camping trip. Yeah. Cool. And have you, or has Brandon ever done any of the winter camping yet? Yep. Yeah, yeah. we did a trip this past winter um, together and he enjoyed it. Yeah. I think so. Oh yeah. Well, you gave me the option to leave after the second day, and I'm like, no, no, we'll stay. Let's yeah. Go. We um we brought a bought a pile of beer, and that's the nice thing about the winter camping. You throw everything on a sled. Yeah. And you carry it, right? So, so true. um, I I like that, and it's a different style. It was completely new for me. I've never done anything like that, but I love the cozy fire inside. Um, it was a little bit more chill. Like you're not canoeing all day you kind of more stay put kind of thing when you're doing that but uh very interesting i love that there's no bugs to worry about yeah. and um and from that trip we've made improvements on like i'm like you know what i find i find it hard in those little hot tents uh, if you don't have a, a seat so we've got some super lightweight little seats now uh little things like that we're improving on to to make it a little bit more enjoyable uh, for the next time cool Cool. Yeah, you guys did a really good commercial there. I think that whole video was uh, based on Molson Canadian. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right? You, got, you, got, you guys should be getting a contract on that one. We have one more guest in the basement here that we'll bring up, and uh, then we'll draw the uh, show to a close. I'm just going to bring uh, Brandon up to the screen. How are you doing, Brandon? Good. How are you guys? Good. Thanks for joining us. Same. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, well, yeah, I have like uh, – a bunch of sticky notes here that I made, but uh, <laughs> oddly enough, most of the questions were answered throughout the feed tonight. But the one question I have is kind of for Brandon on his his mill. Um, when you bought the mill, did you uh, 
did you purchase it as kind of like a thing to, you know, as like a hobby to do, or was it more of, you know, to go with your, um, your, your tree working job and, you know, sell lumber or sell the live edge wood? Um, so my thinking at the time was, uh, so I got a recommendation from someone that's been doing it forever. And he said, you should get a mill because, so I got like, I got stacks and stacks and stacks of logs. Right. Uh, but my background is actually in construction. I did that, uh, for a long, long time building all kinds building homes and all kinds of stuff. Right. So, um, the idea behind it was kind of like, you know, what would be amazing is to, instead of just trying to get rid of all this really great wood is to just make my own lumber um and i love like like you said like the live edge stuff stuff that you can't just go down to a store you can't go down to home depot and say i want the you know i want the 28 inch wide three inch thick live edge maple slab <laughs> no you're not going to get that it's only like i love the fact that you can just uh, make anything you want out of out of the logs you get something that you cannot get anywhere else uh, you can't get anything wider than like 12 inches uh, and 16 feet long at a, all right but the mill i have you i could do 21 feet i could do 28 inches wide anything you can dream of so the kind of idea i had was i wasn't really sure where i was going to go with it but i thought you know what with all the wood that i get um i'd love to even just to be able to make my own boards to to, to build my own stuff instead of having to go to a store kind of thing and just and burn the stuff or give away the stuff i get um i also do a lot of uh, welding and stuff so the idea of taking one of these like live edge maple slabs and welding up some some cool legs on it. it's like kind of the the modern um and natural look uh together is is kind of um, been a thing lately so I, I didn't really have a one goal in mind but more of just the possibilities of what we could do with it was kind of the idea sure um so my my dad is planning on buying one uh well ordered one and should be getting it you know, in the next few months or something. And one of the things we talked about was, uh, you know, trying to um, simulate, you know, like the old hand hewed uh, type timber or lumber. Have you experienced or, or have you played around with doing anything like that? Is it possible, um, you know, with the bandsaw, can you turn the blade speed down and get more of a really rough type finish? Um, so, on mine, I could probably rig it to go with a lower band speed. I think if you went with a different blade, um, there, they, you can get different blades in different um, in different degrees. Um, so if you're if you're if you're gonna mill like something really really hard, uh, what do they say? You want to go with a like the lower numbers, like a six degree or a four degree or something like that. And then uh, if it's if it's like a pine and it's soft you can go with like a 10 so i think you could probably get that really like rustic look with with uh, just the blade um and you can uh, that's the trick you, you could kind of manipulate your blade speed a little bit on mine i'd have to like i said I'd have to jimmy rig it a bit but i think that'd be something you could definitely do with a combination of uh, you don't want to go too slow probably as you're as you're moving because it'll it'll eliminate that so you probably want to go quick with like a like a, a really um uh, not a fine blade but like where the teeth are really far apart go quick yeah. slow it down i think you could probably i've never done it myself to, to kind of mimic that look but the one thing that really mimics that look is when i hit a piece of metal uh, I think in our one of our videos it shows that we hit a we hit a screw that was in there and as soon as we hit that it like it gives you that fibrous look not like a really fine like yeah. uh, and it, and the blade kind of tends to go up and down on you too so i think you, you'd have no problem getting that kind of uh thing if you're if you're intentionally trying to do it without having to ruin the blade and hit a screw probably sure. <laughs> have to buy used blades yeah i got lots <laughs> i can sell you at a discount <laughs> oh, that's awesome first time to the uh show tonight brandon it is yeah first time live streaming too i wasn't sure how to do it, and so it took a little experimentation. But awesome. awesome! Thanks for joining us. Hey, we popped another cherry tonight. Look at that! Eh? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice, awesome! Thanks very much for uh, joining our panel. Did you have any more questions for uh, Karina and Brandon? Or well, I guess I guess if you let me, I have one more. Go for it. Okay, so for the Timbermates channel. Um, 
you know, is there any type of spoiler? I mean, you've probably, uh, you know, bid some jobs. Is there any type of spoiler you can give away as to what we're going to see on in the future videos, you know, something big that's going to come to Timbermates? Yes. Yeah. We've, got, we've got two projects, two big projects uh, in the pipeline coming up. One of them is going to be a little bit off probably what you wouldn't expect. And so we want to build, um, well, we've got a couple of building projects. We're just kind of waiting on the, uh, getting the right land. And with COVID, everything just went crazy and crazy expensive. So that's going to be a little bit based on when we can find the available property to do that. We want to do some really cool timber frame um, buildings, that kind of thing. Um, but one of the other things, kind of my background and one of my hobbies is kind of goes a little bit off from the, <laughs> like the minimalist, lightweight um, canoeing thing is I've actually built a couple of houseboats myself. Um, so I really love the complete off grid thing, the technology behind it, oh, uh, yeah. solar, all that. So one of our projects we have for Timbermates is um, cause I, like I said, I did a lot of welding and fabrication. It was, we want to do a, a houseboat. We want to show the whole welding, the pontoons from scratch. Um, the process between that and um, I'm going to build hydraulic legs into it. Oh, cool. So when you pull it, like for, for when you, cause you got, you're in Canada, you got to take it out every, every spring, well, you spring and fall kind of thing. Yep. All right. And anyways, so that's one of the things going to be incorporated into it, which is kind of interesting and unique. Also, we're going to mill all our own wood for the boat and we're going to show a complete step-by-step -step of not only how to do it, but how you can, live out there like you're in a home with all the comforts of home with just solar systems and a propane tank completely off grid and show a little bit of that, which is uh, going to be a little bit different. Than, kind of like a nomad yeah. on the water life. It's going to be sweet. Yeah. And it kind of goes like, there's a couple channels that show that like, um, Elsa Ray, uh, Elsa Ray how they, like they, they live in the scamp trailer. So we wanted to kind of do a little bit of that. Not only that, just the building of it, we want to do the time lapse of the entire project start to finish explain explain all the details in other videos and then maybe do a little bit of a Elsa Rea Baron experience of showing what it's like to live out there and enjoy some of the wilderness but not you know not just in a tent but being able to move around on a river system and 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 go to different places like you were living at home and you could you can live there yeah. like not just on a weekend you can live so that's kind of one of the things we wanted to do yeah and something you built yourself yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Like we're talking, Brandon's already built like quite a few boats, and we're talking like he welds up all the pontoons, literally gets bare metal, and just creates this off-grid house. Basically, like it's actually incredible. And I'm the, excited to show it. The technology's it. come a long way with solar systems and off-grid hot right. water fan systems. Like it's 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 and with um, I've I've even had one with a with a satellite on it for for satellite tv like some of this cool stuff you can do now with technology and with the uh was it skynet not skynet <laughs> you call it skynet i call it skynet well no actually joe called it skynet in one oh, of his yeah. videos <laughs> joe robinette um you can like you can live out there all year and uh my i, I know people that do that my parents do that and uh it's just it's a whole nother way of, of living and unfortunately we can't do it in the winter here just because it just gets way too cold to do that but um uh, it's spring to fall you might be able to figure something world. out for that's winter arrangements that would be well. a whole nother engineering yeah. tackle but anyways that's one of our big projects we've got so we want to kind of i don't know if it's gonna if, if people are gonna like it but i it, think they will i've already you know even like suggesting this from alexis at rc eva thank you eva. yeah yeah <laughs> um even with alexis outdoors i was like nobody's gonna go and watch timber mates like it's a completely different style of channel, but there's there's so much support out there. I think people will love it. Yeah, I hope people enjoy it. It's something that I, I really love, and like it's a, the same philosophy. Like we we just kind of want to put out what what we are passionate about, so it doesn't come across as we're just doing it for views or whatever. We right. just want to put out what we love to do, and and hopefully people appreciate it. Yeah. And Timbermates was exactly that. It was just kind of yeah. you know what we like doing this. We find maybe it's interesting, and hopefully other people do. If they don't, well. You know, it's something we can do together. It's a project we did together, and it's so far, it's 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 really really new, but it's it's doing well, and so yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. Brandon, I must say, Brandon, Brandon down here 
<laughs> you you opened up a can of worms there, and that's awesome. Thank yes. you. Yeah, well done. Right? <laughs> I, I, didn't even know yeah, I can't things. I can't wait to see all that. That's that's right yeah. up my alley. So yeah. can't wait. Awesome. Yeah, uh, just just to clarify, which Brandon are you? Because I'm sure you've commented down below. Yeah, yeah, Brandon Rose. Okay, thought so. Cool. Now we'll know. Yeah, everybody calls me Rosie. So if you see that, <laughs> you know, sometime, yeah, awesome. they call me Rosie. <laughs> that's awesome. awesome. Well, thanks, Rosie. We appreciate those questions. Great questions, for sure. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Dennis. Hope you'll be back sometime. I will. I will. Thanks. Nice to meet you, Brandon. Bye. You thanks. That's a, that sounds like a really ambitious project there. That, that's pretty cool. Because uh, when we connected, I think, last time, I might have been in the green room uh, after the yeah. one show in the past there. You guys are actually on the host boat. So, yeah. yeah. Yes. And then you ducked out, and then you, you pop back up, and you're in a different place, I think, right where you are now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are. We live in a little gem where houseboating is is just perfect for here, and um, yeah. Yeah, and so that houseboat you saw us on last time, Dennis. That was uh, Brandon. That was the one that Brandon used to have. And I built and that it. quite a few years ago and just sold it. And now we're gonna we're gonna build something together. Together, yeah. Together. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brandon, Karina, you know what? Thanks very much for spending your Tuesday night with us. This was a blast. Thank you yeah, so much for you. having us Thanks, on the Dennis. show and all the hard work. I hope everybody uh, who's in the chat has taken the time to go and like this video, subscribe to Dennis, because it takes a, so you. much work to, to get this together. And we yeah. really appreciate it, Dennis. You do a great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, you know what? I have fun doing this. So hopefully everybody sees that I'm having fun doing this. And it's yeah. and we get to drink beer too on, on TV almost, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. To, to everybody in the chat, you know what? If For those of you that might be subscribed to just uh, Alexis Outdoors, get on over and check out Timbermates. And for those of you that might be just on Timbermates, get on over there and check out Karina Outdoors. Uh, both great channels. Uh, you're going to enjoy the content that you're going to see there. And uh, I know I look forward to every Every Friday night, you know, all my favorite YouTubers start posting their videos. It's like Friday night's like a candy store to me. You know, I get all excited. I come home and my wife says, we got company coming over. And it's like, no. <laughs> That'd be so, okay. Yeah. So, like, you know, it, it's it's always fun to see uh, your favorite content creators bringing up uh, new material and stuff like that. So, you guys, keep up the great work. Uh, you know what? What you're doing with uh, Timbermates something that interests me I'm not, I'm not a woodworker by all means but you know what it's it's something that i enjoy watching and to see see familiar faces on there uh makes it all that much better and then karina grizz and now the addition of brandon out there uh i'm looking forward to seeing uh what uh alexis outdoors has to hold for us so yeah anyways ah looks like brandon and karina has frozen up stick around guys i'm going to drop you into the basement close up the show and we'll finish things up here Hopefully everybody enjoyed tonight's show. I uh, just wanted to remind you that uh, there's only two more episodes for this season of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show. If you want more beyond that, hit that join button down here on uh, YouTube. Feel free to join because I will be having a couple of uh, impromptu live streams that you'll get notifications about. It'd be a great time uh, to the summertime. We can talk about adventures and stuff like that. It's a lot more relaxed and uh, open than uh, what we do here. This is a little more structured. We got a lot of great things in store for you uh, next season, so that's great. Just remember that uh, tonight's swag giveaway question was, in what year did Karina start correct, uh, Alexis Outdoors? And you could send your answers to coasprize at gmail.com. Go back to uh, about the one-hour mark in the video, and you'll see the, uh, the swag giveaway question there, and make sure you get in. Last week, as I mentioned, we had over 160 entries for uh, the swag giveaway. Great participation, and congratulations to the winner of that. Uh, let's see here. If you uh, enjoyed this episode, as Karina said, please hit the thumbs up. It really helps us get noticed by YouTube. It helps us in the rankings and stuff like that. If you enjoyed the show, please tell all your friends. Maybe uh, you know, hit that subscribe button. That would be great. Thank you very much to everybody. That's awesome. And uh, that's about it. Check us out on Facebook at Canoe Hound Outdoor Adventure Show, and you will know what's coming up next week and the week after, which will be our season finale with a reunion show. A lot of past guests, so you'll want to make sure you tune in. Anyways, my name is Dennis, Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show, and remember, everybody, keep the adventures alive. See you next week.